public hearing for the Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education, joined with the uh, Committee on Science and Technology, is hereby uh, called to order. We would like to uh, uh, welcome everyone uh, and especially acknowledge the uh, presence of our dear colleagues in the Senate. Let me uh, first acknowledge the uh, chairperson of the Committee on uh, Science and Technology, uh, Senator Nancy Binay, our uh, good friend and uh, seatmate. Uh, of course, we wanted to recognize uh, one of the authors of the measure and a member of the committee, Senator Francis Tol Tolentino. Uh, also with us is Senator uh, uh, Lito Lapid, who is also one of the uh, authors of uh, uh, one of the bills and the resolutions we are going to tackle here today. Senator Pia Cayetano is also with us. I, I, I just saw her. Hi, ma'am. Thank you for being with us. Senator Pia Cayetano is uh, with us, one of the champions of education in the Senate. Um, also with us, um, the uh, chairperson of the Commission on Higher Education, uh, Chairman uh, Popoy De Vera III. Sir, good uh, morning. Chad Unifas Executive Director, Ryan Esteves. From the Department of Finance, Attorney Nina Asuncion. Uh, from PASUK, President Tirso Ronquillo. From PACU, President uh, Caroline Enriquez. And uh, representing our teachers, faculty from uh, Cotesco, lead convener, Professor uh, Tadle is uh, with us. Of course, uh, my uh, favorite uh, DDG, Intesda, uh, Director General, uh, Deputy Director General Rosana Ordaneta, and uh, Senator Amy Marcos also is uh, with us. Thank you, Manang from Ilocos. Thank you for joining us. At this uh, juncture, uh, I'd like to uh, make an opening statement. Again, uh, mapagpalang araw po sa ating lahat. Alam po ninyo, at uh, I'm sure alam na alam ng ating mga kasamahan, ni uh, Chairman Popoy, ni DDG Rose, at ng aking mga kasamahan sa Senado, alam po nila yung uh, uh, halos araw-araw na na, na pag-webinar, pag-Zoom meeting, pag-conduct uh, pag, uh, ng mga ganitong uh, pagtitipon. I'm sure uh, naranasan po natin ito. At lahat po siguro tayo ay uh, nakalagin ngayon dito sa Cisco Webex. May counting worry na baka maghang up ang internet connectivity natin anytime. This worry stems from the fact that the Philippines remain a laggard in terms of uh, digital adoption. Last year, Speed Test Global Index ranked the Philippines 103rd out of 139 countries in terms of internet speed. Mas lalo po nating nakikita ngayon ang kabagalan ng internet sa bansa because we are all working or learning from home. Unfortunately, connectivity issues affected the implementation of the Open uh, Distance Learning Act. Imagine after more than uh, five years since the enactment of this law, only 22 HEIs offer distance uh, um, education programs. It's for this reason that we have filed uh, Senate Resolution Number 383 to know how we can strengthen ODL amid the pandemic that has made all the more urgent the shift to online and other alternative modes of learning for our colleges and universities and Tibet institutions. In line with this, Senator Francis Toltolentino has also filed Senate Bill Number 1459 or the establishment of a tertiary online education and distance learning office to help CHED develop guidelines and quality standards for the implementation of online and distance learning, especially in times of national emergencies. Now, we are all aware that the uh, shift to online learning within the shortest time and the lack of preparation of many schools have caused anxiety and resistance among students and faculty members. Halimbawa po sa isang uh, Facebook post, naglabas ng sama ng loob yung isang estudyante sa SUC Ang sabi po niya, sobrang naiinis ako sa sarili ko ngayong araw na ito dahil hindi man lang ako makasali sa online class namin. Nagpa-load ako ng GS50 o yung GoSurf50 ng Globe. Pero hindi pala sa yun. Kahapon, sinusubukan kong mag-sign in sa Microsoft Teams para makasali sa online class namin. 
ngayong araw kaso hanggang ngayon loading pa rin. Tapos hanggang sa hindi na kinaya ng data, ako na lang ang sumuko. Ang hirap namang mag-access ng klase namin, naiiyak na lang ako kasi ang mga classmates ko ay uh, may attendance pero ako wala. Nakakahiya namang manghingi ng pang-load kasi ngayon lang nakabalik sa trabaho si tatay. Gustuhin ko man mag-comply sa mga requirements pero ang hirap talaga ng internet connection. Ito po ang sabi ni uh, ng isang uh, uh, estudyante sa Facebook. Perhaps this kind of situation prompted our dear colleague, si uh, Senator Lito Lapid Pinuno, to file uh, Senate Bill Number 1538 which seeks for a moratorium on student loan payment to ease the burden of families during disasters. In uh, Central Mindanao University, only 56% of students have internet connection. And while we are happy to know that uh, there are universities which are already discussing plans to give a gadget subsidy to their uh, students, we also regret to hear other universities uh, saying, sana all. The faculty members being the frontliners of the um, educative uh, process also warrants full support. And it's good to know that some SUCs like Philippine Normal University will provide for a flexible teaching and connectivity allowance in the amount of 1,000 pesos per month from December, September to December of 2020 for its 366 faculty members. While Technological University of the Philippines has sought um, for the approval of a pandemic allowance for reasonable expenses incurred during work from home arrangement in the amount of 5,000 pesos. Ang sabi po ng isang professor na nakausap po natin, pang-upgrade sa internet subscription ang dagdag na allowance para yung plan 499 pwede ko nang itaas sa plan 1199. Ang uh, hirap na rin in the middle of your Zoom meeting na makat off ang internet access mo. Alam nyo, habang nagsasalita po ako, yan din yung aking uh, worrisome. At uh, sa gitna ng pandemya, walang maliit o malaking ayuda dahil lahat pwede makapag, uh, makapagpagaan sa, sa sitwasyon na ating pong uh, kinasasadlakan, lalo na ng mga estudyante at kaguruan. That's why I'm happy to inform you that uh, our colleagues in the Senate and this representation uh, work very hard. Yung Bayanihan 2 includes uh, 3 billion pesos for assistance to state universities and colleges, specifically for the development of smart camp campuses to implement flexible learning methods. Muli, salamat sa ating mga colleagues, especially kay Senator Pia Cayetano is very uh, uh, passionate about this. Last May, si Chair Popoy po said that only 20% of SUCs are equipped to conduct online classes this coming school year. In the recent BOR meetings that we attended this August, we uh, found out that the level of preparedness to adapt flexible learning considerably vary across uh, SUCs. Filska, for example, has uh, migrated only 10% of its courses to flexible learning, while Pangasinan State University claims that it's already 90% prepared for flexible learning. I can only surmise that this is the uh, context of uh, our uh, dear uh, colleague, Senator Lapid, uh, which uh, when he filed the uh, SR number 415, which seeks to determine the feasibility of creating an online educational delivery platform that will be accessible to all tertiary education institutions, teachers, and students. Ang mga private HEIs po, uh, most especially yung mga maliliit na mga colleges, kailangan-kailangan din po nila ng tulong dahil nasa 60% lang po ang kayang magpatupad ng flexible learning. Yan po ay ayon sa Cocopea. Ang uh, Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities, kasama po natin ngayon, ang sabi po nila, they expect that enrollment in uh, private higher education institutions will drop by, uh, will drop by up to uh, 50%. This is equivalent to roughly 1.5 million to 2 million students, I, I believe, uh, to leave private uh, schools. Ito po ang pangunahing dahilan ng uh, pagsasara ng ilang mga pribadong kolehiyo ngayong may, may pandemya. Masakit po ito para sa isang kabataang nangangarap makapagtapos sa napili o pinagsimula na niyang paaralan. Pero mas masakit po hindi lang sa estudyante kundi sa kanya rin po mga magulang, mahal sa buhay, ang malamang hindi makapasa sa board exam o hirap makapasok sa trabaho ang napagraduate nilang anak. Ano po ang pinupunto ko? Maniwala po tayo that education must continue and it seems that uh, there is no better way to ensure learning continuity 
amid the pandemic than the use of digital and non-digital technology. Pero kailangan po nating matyak na hindi maapektuhan ng flexible learning modality ang kalidad ng ating mga graduates at ang kanilang kasanayan para makasiguro na may oportunidad sa trabaho sila ngayon at sa post-COVID-19 future. In this regard, we also filed uh, Senate Resolution Number 376 to look into the uh, preparedness of our colleges, universities, including TVIs, uh, in the uh, new normal education and ensure quality of graduates and alignment to our industries and the labor job market. Finally, batid ko po ang uh, bigat ng ating uh, trabaho sa nagdaang mga buwan Ang mga panukalang batas at resolusyon na pag-uusapan po natin ngayon ay maaaring dagdag muli sa ating trabaho at mga responsibilidad. Subalit, tiwala po ako na kahit gaano kabigat ang ating pinagdaraanan ngayon dahil sa pandemya, hindi hindi po tayo mauubusan ng lakas dahil sa atin umaasa ang milyong-milyong mga estudyante at kaguruan sa lahat ng ating mga pamantasan at training institution sa buong bansa. Muli, magandang umaga at maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Before we uh, continue, let me acknowledge our dear colleague, Senator uh, uh, Bongo, who's already uh, online, boss. Good morning and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, also with us is uh, the uh, lead convener of Students' Rights and Welfare Coalition, Julian Tariela, and uh, DICT engineer Enrico Toledo, project manager of free internet access in public areas and places. We'd like to give the floor to our dear colleagues. Perhaps we'd, we'd, we'll start with the chairperson of the Committee on Science and Technology, Senator Nancy Binay. You have the floor. Chair, sure, but um, I don't have any opening statement. We can proceed already. Kasi baka bago maputulan tayo ng signal. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Senator Nancy. We'll give the floor now to one of the authors, Senator uh, Francis uh, Tolentino. Central. Mute, Senator Tol. Senator Villanueva, uh, Chairman Villanueva, uh, at your colleagues, Senator Cayetano, Senator Chief, happy Senator Bongo. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Uh, salamat po at ditinggin niyo ngayon itong Senate Bill 1459, entitled and established in the tertiary online learning and distance education office under the chair, amending uh, for that purpose Republic Act 10650 otherwise known as the Open Distance Learning Act and for other purposes. In summary po, the Bill 62 address the void in Republic Act 10650, the Open Distance Learning Act of 2014, by reaching out to students in the tertiary level to make use of the virtual platforms in times of calamities or crisis. Naalala ko pa ho nung uh, isang hearing natin, hindi katagalan, na tinanong ko si uh, Chairman Popoy Tibera, I'm sure he can, he can answer now, O pwede po ba yung isang agricultural student uh, coming from Gimaras na tumigil na lang po sa, sa Gimaras uh, State University or Agricultural College para hindi na po pumunta sa UP Los Banyos at i-credit na lang po yung courses doon utilizing whatever uh, uh, online equipment are available in Gimaras. Uh, with this regard, the bill proposes the creation of a tertiary online education and distance office under the CHED. The said office will not only serve as the lead agency for open distance learning, but also prescribe the minimum curriculum requirements for online and distance learning. Sa ngayon po, wala pa tayong ganyan. It will be at the forefront of developing the necessary policy guidelines and quality standards for the extensive implementation of online and distance learning, especially in times of national emergencies, calamities, at gakagaya po na nararanasan natin ngayon. The force of circumstances we are currently dealing with urges us to prioritize these measures by providing for virtual and alternative means of learning to ensure that no student will be left behind in the coming academic year or whenever we are faced with a similar calamity or crisis in the future. The Open Distance Learning Act of 2014 has already outlined guidelines to institutionalize open distance learning in coordination with CHED and TESDA. By amending this act, by creating another office within CHED, it will eliminate the need for students to take a gap year due to lack of resources or worry about the possibility of being delayed in finishing their studies just so they can avoid the risk of contracting 
the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. Also, students should never be made to choose between education and health, both of which are recognized as fundamental human rights. Once again, salamat po, Chairman Villanueva, for tackling this bill together in other proposed bills and resolutions under your committee. The invaluable discussion we'll have today on the future of our tertiary education during the new normal. Hindi alam kung kailan ito matatapos. We not only strongly echo the utmost priority given to education by no less than our constitution, but also promote the right of all our citizens to quality, affordable, and accessible education at all levels. Maraming salamat po, ha, Chairman Abigano. Thank you very much, uh, Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. We'd uh, like to ask our dear colleagues from the Senate if uh, anyone would like to give uh, opening statement, Senator Pia, Senator... I okay, Senator Pia, Cayetano, you're recognized, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Chair. Um, yes, I'd like to just make a quick statement. Um, I'm the author and I was the sponsor. I, I actually was the sponsor, no? I believe the author, the principal author was the late Senator Ed Angara and our colleague, uh, Senator Sunny Angara, was the counterpart author in the House of Representatives. So I was the sponsor. I was the chair of the Committee on Education at the time that we passed the um, app, uh, the Open Distance Learning Act. And um, I, my manifestation is very simple. Um, I just need, I'd just like to give some context no, on, on how and why um, this. I felt that this uh, bill was very relevant at that time. I was actually in Hong Kong hiking with the running priest, and um, we were chatting about the OFWs in Hong Kong, which, he was, uh, which was his ministry at that time. And he was telling me the story of many OFWs who would use their only remaining rest time after long hours of working in homes of other people to study so that they can improve themselves. And they and some of them were uh, studying through, um, I forgot the name, but we visited, that's why I, I prefaced my story that I was hiking with the running place because we were in, uh, I think... Uh, Lantau Island, where there is a, um, a uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, hindi home, ano ba tawag doon? But there was a group of um, nuns, no? Parang, what, what do you call them? The nuns na they take a vow of uh, silence. Anyway, Very they took... Monastery. A, yeah, monastery. There you go. Monastery nga ba yun? O para sa mga priests and brothers yun? I don't know. Anyway, it's a congregation of nuns um, that included many Filipino um, nuns who take a vow of silence and uh, their ministry, aside from praying for people and living in silence, was distance education. And a lot of Filipina OFWs were taking courses from them. Um, I think they had a tie up with uh, colleges and universities, one or two colleges and universities in the Philippines that provided the modules. I was so impressed with the, ter the determination of these uh, Filipina OFWs with the ministry of these nuns that um, it really triggered my, uh, I, I, I said, you know, I, I know we have a bill like that pending and that's why I heard this bill and it is now a law. Um, at that time, I, we did not foresee something like a pandemic. In fact, the use of the internet was just starting and I'm looking at the bill and I don't really think we really saw it as a big um, uh, um, module, the, the online learning. But the point is, uh, we already saw this need as a whole, and um, I'm very happy that this is in place. This is actually in use. This was just really meant to institutionalize a practice that already existed. And uh, if you read the bill, it refers to the University of the Philippines because they really were the pioneer, and it is their mandate as the national university to provide training and to share their knowledge with other institutions. And then, pa rin naman yon. So I very much welcome the... Uh, the uh, uh, efforts and uh, any initiative to strengthen this further, including creating an office that will uh, really um, be able to maximize the intention of this bill. And I will be happy to participate in the days to come also and hear uh, the input of our, of our resource person. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Senator uh, Pia Cayetano. At this juncture, if uh, my colleagues, uh, if there's, because I couldn't see everyone, no, I can see uh, just some of our colleagues, if they wanted to, to make uh, any uh, opening statement, comments, uh, please uh, do so. And at this juncture, let me uh, uh, put on record and insert for the record the uh, sponsorship speech 
of our dear colleague, Senator uh, Lito Lapid. Uh, uh, let it be inserted into the records. Um, we'll give the floor now to our uh, uh, first uh, resource uh, person, uh, and perhaps he could also give us a update of uh, what Senator Pia mentioned a while ago about uh, open uh, universities. Uh, we'll give the floor to Chair, Chair uh, Chairperson uh, Popoy uh, De Vera III. Sir, good morning, and uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, ask the indulgence of the committee. I couldn't uh, log on uh, earlier because uh, I was chairing a special meeting of the UP Board of Regents to discuss specifically what we are taking up now, which is to help uh, students get gadgets, especially the poor students to get gadgets and also putting in place a loan program for faculty members so they could uh, get uh, their uh, gadgets, uh, their, uh, uh, their computers, or upgrade it. So I couldn't leave them uh, immediately because we were discussing the funding source on where the money will come from. And uh, I hope to catch up with them uh, uh, later. I think it's, it will still be a long discussion uh, because there's a lot of UP students and faculty members that need assistance. But with respect to the uh, manifestation of uh, Senator Cayetano, if there is one uh, silver lining to COVID-19, I think it is the fact that a lot of things that we did not uh, seriously support in the past, which was needed, we have become obligated to do it. And one of this is open distance learning. Uh, we have the policy, we have the law to cover it, but to be very frank, in the Philippines, uh, we are way behind our neighbors in the region in the use of open distance learning as a mechanism to increase access to uh, higher education. That is because when the UP started this uh, before, during the time initially of President Nemenso, uh, initially during the time of President Javier and then finally President Nemenso. Uh, actually, we did not do what our ASEAN neighbors were doing. When we started the distance learning in the Philippines for UP Open University, we focused on the graduate level. And some of the other state universities and colleges also used open distance learning in the graduate level. Open distance learning in other countries in the region is a mechanism to increase access in the undergraduate level so that you increase the capacity of the system to get more students to learn uh, without the necessity of uh, increasing the physical structure of your campuses. So if you compare us versus the leading uh, leading countries uh, in the region, like India, for example, and Indonesia, we are way behind in the number of students who are enrolled in distance education. Um, in, uh, India has about 1.9 million students enrolled in the, in the open distance learning. I think Indonesia is about 1.4. So uh, we also have not invested well in connectivity in the universities. Uh, because uh, our level of comfort was to use the more traditional face-to-face -face, uh, classes. So I think this uh, pandemic has now forced us to rethink the way we are doing things. And on the part of the commission, we have been meeting with the universities to reframe open distance learning. Number one, to uh, 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 connect it with ETIAP. Because ETIAP is another program of the government, similar to ALS in the undergraduate, where students who did not finish their undergraduate degrees or their graduate degrees can go back to school and their experience uh, can be credited so that they can finish their degrees. So we are tying up ETIAP with open distance learning so that we create a new uh, a new avenue for students to get degrees if they have not finished it, and for new students to use open distance learning to get their degrees. Second, we are shifting it 
to do more undergraduate rather than graduate program. So we are re-examining the uh, uh, schools that will be allowed to deliver this, encouraging schools to, uh, to link up with each other on a consortium basis so that the manifestation of Senator Tolentino that uh, one, a student in one school can cross-enroll in another school using distance mode can be, can be possible. Uh, because one advantage of open distance learning is it is, uh, it is, uh, COVID, uh, it is COVID resilient or COVID proof because you don't need to uh, do significant travel. Plus the location of the school geographically which is a problem in many areas in the country. The students are very far from the schools. You solve that because of open distance learning. So this is the direction. Uh, I'll, I'll have to ask the indulgence of the Senate. These things, unfortunately, cannot be, cannot be uh, you know, developed overnight because you need universities to uh, formalize the way they work it, at each other, to develop joint degree programs, to adjust credentials that are needed across universities. And I am as impatient as the Senate uh, and hope that our universities can move this uh, faster. But we welcome the bill that will create uh, uh, a special office in the Commission on, uh, on uh, open distance learning. Uh, I would like to request that this provision of the bill be incorporated in the bill filed by Senator Villanueva to reorganize CHED. If this same provision can be included in that bill to now identify specific offices in the reorganized CHED, then there will be consistency with the intention to improve open distance learning, as well as incorporate this as a major function and activity of the reorganized Commission on Higher Education. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Popoy. I'm, I'm having problems with my audio. Thank you, Chairman Popoy. And uh, we'll give the floor now to uh, the representative of uh, DICT, uh, uh, Engineer uh, Toledo. Are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Uh... Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Eric we Toledo. Can't hear you. Do you hear me? Okay, go. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, for now, uh, allow me to present that the free Wi Fi uh, as of July 28th. Uh, 2020, we have 4,549 4, uh, live sites. And then when regards to uh, SUC, the site is up and working as of July 28 is 120, uh, 102. And then the number of sites per SUCs that we provided is 266. Kasi po, sir, uh, Hindi naman uh, for every uh, SUCs, merong mga several hotspots that we, we put. And then the target to complete this uh, end of August is another 16 SUCs with the 23 uh, hotspot. And then by the end of 2020, for the fourth quarter, uh, we will uh, complete, we will try to complete the target is 653 SUCs with a total of 1,860 uh, live sites. Uh, that's all, Mr. Chair, for the free public Wi-Fi. Medyo mahina internet. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all for the free public Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, we we'll give the floor to uh, DG Rose uh, for the NETA of TESDA. May we hear uh, from, from TESDA? Uh, good morning, the chair of the Committee on Higher Technical Education 
education. Of course, belated happy birthday to your senator. To the chair of the Committee on Science and Technology, Senator Nancy Pina, and to the other members of the Senate who are present, and to my fellow colleagues in the government. On behalf of our Director General, Secretary Cedro La Pena, I would like to thank you for inviting TESDA in this consultation. I would like to inform the members of the two committees that TESDA is supportive and promotes online, distance, and blended mode of learning. The TESDA online program, which was a brainchild by no less than our former Secretary and Director General, Senator Joel Villanueva, was launched in 2012. He was the one who, who had aggressively pushed for its implementation. It was created basically to reconsider new learning modes and to expand TVET capacity by accommodating those who cannot enter the TVET institutions and to also broaden access to the TVET programs. With the advent of the ICT fast tracking, the expansion of the scope through e-learning was an opportunity because e-learning would increase the absorptive capacity of TVIs to, del to deliver event programs and services. The TESA online program provides free event online courses and learning materials designed to be taken at the learner's pace, space, and at their own time. The, the program is created for students and out-of-school youths, unemployed adults, overseas workers, and professionals who would like to take TVET courses at the comfort of their desktops or laptop computers. The TOP has become the prominent alternative mode of TVET learning during the quarantine period. It has continued to gain traction with users reaching up to 850,566 from the start of the quarantine on March 16 to August 3, 2020, which brings the total users from 2012 to now to 2.1 million since it was implemented, of course, in 2012. It has now 71 online courses across 13 categories. Allow me also to share that we have issued TESDA Circular Number 62, Series of 2020, on the guidelines in implementing flexible learning in Tibet to provide a conducive environment that is responsive to the shifting needs and requirements of the society. Flexible learning in Tibet provides the TVIs the option to adapt face-to-face online learning, blended, or distance learning, depending on their institutional capacity, trainers' capability, learners' access to learner uh, learning resources and technology, and of course, to IATF resolutions and LGU ordinances. A TVI may adopt the combination of distance learning or face-to-face -face in delivering TVET programs that will require the use of large or complicated learning equipment. These guidelines has been cascaded and rolled out among the TVIs and is continuously being promoted by our regional and provincial offices. As we are now shifting to a more flexible learning mode, TESDA is strengthening its TESDA online program, and we have also um, trained 3,000 learning facilitators in order to implement this training program nationwide. To the honorable members of the Committees on Higher and Technical Education and Science and Technology, TESDA remains committed to the Open Distance Learning Act. However, we deem that with the changing needs of the economy and for the ODL Act to be more responsive, there is a need to review and maybe expand the coverage of the said act and include the Department of Education. As we are now forced by this pandemic to deliver education and training using flexible delivery modes, all the education agencies, DepEd, TESDA, and CHED should be working together 
to ensure standard and a more holistic provision of online learning and distance education. With this, we also further recommend that a TWG or a technical working group within the Philippine Qualifications Framework National Coordinating Council should be formed to ensure alignment and concurrence to Philippine educational framework, whether traditional face-to-face -face or flexible and distance modalities. All education agencies should have a dedicated office that will monitor the implementation of the ODL and will be in charge to design, develop, conceptualize, and implement standards and policies for online and distance education of their respective agencies. Mr. Chair, the move of the legislature to look into the readiness and preparedness of all education institutions, students and faculty to shift to online modes of learning in the light of the continuing threat of the coronavirus and the status of the internet connectivity in the country is indeed laudable. With the pandemic, the need for better internet connectivity and the readiness of the education community to adapt to the new normal of learning and teaching is of paramount concern. The DICT should be put to task also in ensuring the availability and accessibility of fast internet platform, especially in far flung areas. With the shift to a blended learning modality, the more the technology must be made available. Lastly, test the support Senate Bill 1538, which provides moratorium on student loan payments during disasters and other emergencies. Given the circumstances being experienced by the families due to loss or lack of income in, the, in disasters or during disasters, students will not have the means to pay for their loan payments. It is recommended further by test that, that safeguard measures for HEIs and TVIs should be provided in the bill to ensure repayment of the student loans. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, uh, DDG uh, Rose Ordanenta. Sabi nga ni uh, Manang Aimi, uh, sa, sa online learning, di tayo at hirap tayong mag-online hearing. We're ha still having problems with connection and I check with Globe talagang may problema yung uh, connection nila. But anyway, uh, before we continue, uh, our dear colleague, Senator uh, Bongo, wanted to, to, to make uh, a, a comment. Uh, Senator Bongo, you have the floor. Good morning, uh, Sir Chair, distinguished uh, colleagues, and to the resource persons uh, present today, uh, good day to all. Uh, we are all aware that the pandemic continues to threaten the lives of many Filipinos in the country. The norm which we all live before will not be the same once we get through this pandemic. Yet, before we cross the bridge, we are faced with many challenges at present. Today, we will be tackling different measures that will hopefully address the woes of the woes our higher education system is currently facing. Despite the current health crisis, our aim is to ease the burden for our students and, and also their families. Bago pa man nangyari ang pandemya, marami na kinakaharap na problema ang ating mga studyante at ng pamilya. Libre man ang ating mga kolehiyo at iba pang government vocational schools Hindi pa rin ito sapat para makapag-aaral na maayos ang ating mga estudyante. Marami pa rin sa ating mga kaaral ang mahihirap at naghahalap ng paraan para maituwid ang kanilang mga nagugutom na mura hapang na nag -aaral. Ano pa ngayon ay pandemya na? Ibig sabihin, uh, mas mahirap po ang sitwasyon sa ngayon. Sa gitna ng economic uh, crisis na dulot ng uh, COVID-19, aminin natin marami sa ating mag-aaral in the tertiary and higher education ay mga working uh, students. Naghahanap buhay sila para may pangkustos sa pang-araw-araw na gastos. This is why I ask you, my colleagues, 
to tackle this issue of shifting to online platforms with careful uh, consideration. We need to look not only in the government's uh, capability to adjust, but uh, also uh, in our students' capability to respond in the new norm of education. The online platform, uh, this is so that we can continue to improve our education system and bridge the gaps of learning without giving more stress mentally, emotionally, and uh, financially. My, uh, Pag-aralan pag nating mabuti ang mga hakbang na ito, hindi lang problema sa pag-aaral ang kinakaharap nila, kundi pag-iisip kung paano mabuhay. Mr. Chair, our tradition, uh, traditional education system will never be the same as we go through the health uh, crisis without a vaccine. I reiterate my stand, uh, no vaccine, no face-to-face -face traditional uh, classes. Uh, yan rin po ang... Uh, stand ng ating Pangulo, anhin po natin ng another year level kung magkakasakit naman ang mga bata. We all understand uh, the importance of education, yet we must uh, also remind ourselves that uh, above all, the right to live must be of uh, utmost uh, priority. Huwag po natin biglain at pilitin at uh, baka naman na uh, tumugo. Kapag binigla natin ang pagbalik sa normal na klase, buhay po ng mga bata ang tinataya natin kapag pinilit natin na ng makabagong paraan ng online na uh, learning dudugoin rin ang estudyante kung hindi ni, kung hindi sila makapag-adjust ng uh, maayos kaya palagi kong paalala sa DepEd, CED at iba pang ehensya sa sektor ng edukasyon pag-aralan po natin mabuti importante na makapag-aral pa rin ng mga bata hindi masayang ang isang taon pero para sa paraang uh, hindi sila mapipilitang ma-expose sa uh, sakit. Sa kagustuhan rin nating mag-adapt ng makabagong pamamaraan ng pagtuturo, siguraduhin natin na hindi mapunta sa bata ang uh, burden. Schools and education officials must guide students in order for them to adjust to the new modes of uh, learning. Kung sa traditional na paraan ay nahirapan ng mga mahihirap na bata na makapagtapos sa pag-aaral, Paano pa kaya, pa kaya ngayon? Mapipilitan silang mag sa bagong teknolohiya habang hinaharap ang dagdag na kahirapan na dulot ng COVID-19. Sana naman po ay walang bumagsak na estudyante dahil sa kulang sa kagamitan, walang akses sa teknolohiya at hindi sapat na kalaman sa bagong modes of uh, learning uh, ma-implementa ngayon. Kung tayo nga po sa Senado ay nahirapan po sa Zoom. Tulad ngayon, eh, napuputol-putol po ang ating uh, collection, papano na lang uh, sila, yung mga estudyante. Mas lalo po silang mahirapan. Kung tayo ay hirap na hirap po sa online connection sa panahon ito. Kaya nga po nagalit ang ating uh, pangulo dahil uh, sa mabagal nating na uh, internet uh, access. So kung tayo po ay hinahirapan sa online learnings at naging biktima ng mabagal na internet, paano pa po sila? Marami po mga estudyante ang walang laptop o internet access. Marami estudyante ang mahirap. Siguraduhin natin na lahat ng mga estudyante natin ay mabibigyan ng pantay na oportunidad sa ilalim ng ating learning continuity plan in all levels of education. As we prepare our students, we should also equip our professors and the teaching staff to be able to adapt to these new modes of uh, teaching, lalo po uh, tayo ay kailangan matuto upang maturuan ang ating mga kapataan sa panahon ng new normal. And since education is a right, and uh, as this chamber tackles on our online education ship, we must be ready to invest in technology, resources, and uh, training so that every Filipino student can have access to proper and quality education despite the current uh, situation. We also need to formulate the right kind of framework where our higher education and tertiary institutions can operate. In order to achieve an efficient and effective online learning system as a legislator, we need to inspect all, uh, all uh, I mean, uh, uh, lahat po ay dapat nating uh, pag-aralan muna ang uh, lahat at uh, magbigyan po ang, ang
pantay-pantay na po pinidad ang ating mga kapataan. Lalong-lalo na po in this time of uh, pandemic. So, maraming uh, salamat po. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Senator uh, Bongo. I'd like to put on record that uh, I share the sentiment of our uh, good senator and we have been uh, saying that uh, we have very strong reservation uh, yung dun sa face-to-face -face, uh, learning at uh, ito nga sa blended, importante talaga na mapag-usapan at mapag-aralan mabuti dahil uh, gaya nga nung binanggit natin kanina, uh, uh, tinext tayo ni Senator Aimee, mean, nag-online <laughs> hearing tayo, hirap na hirap, pero paano pa kaya yung uh, online learning? Uh, but uh, we will continue to uh, we will continue to talk about this and uh, at this uh, juncture may may I uh, now give the floor to uh, our first senator to ask questions uh, huli na yung chair magpaparaya na yung chair uh, kay senator uh, Amy Marcos the distinguished lady from Ilocos fresh from Ilocos and let's find out if uh, she has a very good internet connection in Ilocos Senator Amy, you have the floor. Thank you. Yes, that's right. Um, may konting tanong lang ako tungkol dito nga sa CHED. Obviously, it's early days, pero I think very important para sa CHED eh, yung focused effort to set standards on online and distance learning. Sangkatuta ka nakikita nating material na libre at hinahayaan na gamitin. Pero sa kabila nito, yung iba naman palpak, hindi masyadong maganda yung materialis, hindi matutupin na talagang educational. Um, perhaps, uh, Chad can enlighten us, kay Chair Popoy, kung paano natin may standardize at saka at least may konting quality control kasi yung ibang eskwela, napansin ko dito sa amin, eh kung ano-ano naman ginagamit, hindi naman maituturing na tertiary educational standard. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Chairman, if I may be allowed to respond. Uh, last, uh, yes, Chairman June, last June, we launched the Philippines Chat Connect. That is an online portal where uh, 18 universities, both in the Philippines and abroad, as well as our uh, partners in international education, uh, contributed online materials that can be used by faculty and students. So these are, uh, these are very good materials because they have been vetted by universities that have a long history already of offering open distance learning, including universities like uh, UP Open U, Mapua, uh, De La Salle, uh, STI, and the others. And this uh, Philippines Chat Connect is open for all universities uh, so that when their faculty redesign their syllabus, uh, identify materials that they will use for flexible learning, they can get it from here. So this is the initial, initial uh, step that the commission has done uh, to make sure that there are quality materials put in one site uh, that can be used by faculty members. We've also entered into agreements with companies that supply ebooks so that they can provide the limited access to ebooks for free. Uh, for example, a faculty member is allowed to download as many as uh, 50 ebooks uh, from the site for free before they start paying. And we are looking into other sources of uh, good materials that we can put in. So that's the first step. The second yes. step. Yes, Chair. I think um, uh, there are uh, there are copious amounts of online materials, many of them free, na magagamit na ngayon. Kaya nga lang, ang, um, ang concern po, as usual, medyo mahina tayo sa M&E, yung monitoring and evaluation. Kasi kung minsan nakakalusot yung walang kwenta no, na, na mga materials at yun na lang ang ginagamit para madali. So, I was thinking, perhaps in addition 
collection. We're looking for all the, the freebies available right now and all the initiatives on your part. Maybe uh, even if it's very early days, we start already with a monitoring and evaluation uh, set up so that uh, hindi naman mag-suffer at magkaroon ng unlearned being and uh, loss of quality. Yes, I, I agree, uh, Senator Marcos. We do need to put a very good monitoring and evaluation system because uh, uh, we have too many universities uh, uh, of different sizes, different locations, different capacities. We don't worry about the top universities who have been doing open distance learning for a long time. We don't need to monitor them. Uh, what we expect them to do is to help the less prepared universities by training their teachers, making their materials available. What we have encouraged is that in the region, per region, that the universities form a consortium among themselves, both public and right. private. So they can help each other and also so that the good and better prepared universities can share their resources with the less prepared universities. Yun namang problema ng mga faculty na baka kung ano-ano na lang ginagamit. It is not because the faculty members don't want to provide quality education. Sometimes it is because their training is not you know good enough or not prepared to do it. Second, their source of materials is not uh, is they don't know where to get the materials. And number three, they're not learning from other educators. So pag may regional consortium, they can they can actually share materials, they can learn from each other, and they can help each other. Uh, that, that is the that is what we're doing. So region five, for example, all the public and private universities in region five have formalized a consortium already. Region 8, meron na rin sila. Yung ibang region, uh, ang nagko-consortium pa lang yung malalaking universities. Ang concern natin is the smaller private universities, those with less than 1,000 students. Kasi yes. they don't have the financial capacity to do their own training. They Yun don't have the financial capacity to buy online, online materials. Yun ang dapat targetin, uh, Senator. Yes, but uh, I think Carlos and Stickyan, on one hand, siyempre tutulungan natin at bigyan natin ng incentives yung maliliit. Unang-una, nagsasarahan na yun eh. Pero sa kabila nun, ang takot natin, maging online diploma million. Kasi, eto nga, very convenient excuse na bigay na lang ng diligay ng ng uh, diploma, automatic yung uh, promotion, hindi eh, naman natin alam kung ano talaga ang uh, tinapos ng bata dahil hindi nakakapag-monitor yung chat. So I enjoy yung chat to please uh, look at that. And at the same time, eto, may salita kasi dito sa probinsya na ang damot-damot doon ng UP. Ayan, the usual complaint na Imperial Manila, ang damot ng UP sa materiales. Hirap na hirap ang mga probinsyano mag-access ng UP-developed uh, materials. When in fact, doon sa Open Distance Learning Act, mandated talaga siya na tulungan lahat ng HEI. Meron ba kayong masasabi tungkol na sa reklamong yun? Uh, na narinig ko na po yung reklamong yan. Ang aking sagot, meron hong... Uh, kasing galing o mas magagaling pa na private universities na mas bukas tumulong. Tulad ng De La Salle, De La Salle St. Benil, Mapua. Mapua is uh, sharing the video, video lectures of their top uh, faculty members so other universities. Ang hiningi po yes, namin. Yes, that's right. Ang ganda-ganda nga ng kanilang engineering online eh. Yes. Kaya, kaya sabi, ko sa, sabi ko sa Mapua, Pwede bang hiramin namin muna yung materials nyo kahit na isang school year lang? Hiram lang muna yes. kasi ginastosan nila ito, sabi ko. And within that one year, we will we will fund projects so that the other universities can start doing it on their own. And yes, I'm very, uh, uh, I'm very familiar with the uh, Mapua computer uh, engineering. And indeed, they've been very, very uh, generous. Lalo na lasal. Uh, miski sa analo, si Emada download mo. Ang problema, nasa batas na UP, higit sa lahat, uh, public
public funds yan. Bakit hindi naman sila nagsashare? Kahit naman sa SUC at pati sa maliliit na eskwelahan. Uh, siguro, palibasa, kwento mo nga, galing ka sa, sa koan, sa, sa meeting ng UP, Pakisabi naman, hindi naman ito time na, maki, uh, na maging madamot o talagang ipagkait sa mas maliliit na eskwelahan ng mga materyales. Pipilitin ho namin ni Senator Villanueva sa susunod na Board of Regents meeting ng UP na pwesayin sila kung hindi man nagbibigay. Pero dito ho, nandito ang presidente ng Our Lady of Fatima. Marami rin ho silang magagandang online materials. Ipinapahiram din ho nila ng libre ang nakikita ko po, ang mas masipag magbayanihan ay yung magagaling na private universities at yung Sinabi nyo. state universities. Yan po ang observasyon kong personal. Uh, uh, oh, na, I, pero, I, pero, I just wanted yes. to tell you na nandito kasama natin ang uh, Philippine Association of uh, 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 Colleges and Universities, yung private, uh, yung PACO, no? uh, President Caroline uh, Enriquez. Kasama din natin yung uh, Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, President uh, Tirso Ronquillo. And at this juncture, let me also recognize um, Senator, our Majority Floor Leader is with us, Senator Mig Subiri. And uh, of course, ating uh, representative from Dole, Asik Niki Tutay. Please proceed. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yun lang. Kung may bayanihan sa COVID, dapat naman meron rin bayanihan sa distance learning. Yun lang ang uh, sasabihin ko. At dapat pilitin yung UP. Ang laki-laki naman ng budget nila na nakukuha sa gobyerno. So, public uh, property na rin ang kanilang mga online materials. Yun lang. Senator uh, Amy uh, Marcos, Perhaps it's a good uh, segue to uh, recognize a president of uh, PASOK or PACO? Uh, PASOK president, uh, Tirso Ronquillo. Uh, sir, uh, may we hear from you? Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for inviting us in PASOK. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I share my slide? Huh? Uh, recently, uh, Mr. Chair, we uh, surveyed our SUCs and we are very happy to join this uh, uh, Senate meeting on the online distance education. We got uh, 17 responses. In fact, we have 112 members of PASUK and uh, recently they just gave us this data of 29 or 79 SUCs. Uh, you might ask why only 79. We are now having hard time getting this data. Maybe that can be uh, uh, connected to poor connectivity also in some issues. However, uh, just to give you a feel of what's the real situation on the ground, uh, there are 79 issues reported that there are internet service providers in their area. And uh, there are 60 SUCs that can be serviced by PLDT, Smart, and DICT, 59 by Globe, 12 by Converge, and a few SUCs with small local providers in their area. I have here a lot of data, and I will just be presenting some highlights of this uh, survey. Uh, almost all of the SUCs serviced by DICT is still subscribed to other ISPs, and uh, we are happy to uh, hear the report of our uh, colleague, our, uh, colleague from DICT. Uh, in fact, uh, Wi-Fi of uh, DICT is really providing free Wi-Fi among SUCs, and they are continuing do, continuously doing it, and we are happy to know that that is a big augmentation to the current uh, internet service providers among us SUCs, which we are paying at a cost. Uh, the top ISPs that service SUCs are PLDT Smart, uh, 50 of them, and Globe, 42 of them. There are 39 SUCs, which comprise 49%, with only one provider. Uh, 23 of the 79 SUCs or 29% with two providers and 17 SUCs or 22% with three or more providers. On the average, out of these uh, 79 SUCs, the average speed per month uh, of uh, internet in SUCs is 322 only Mbps. Uh, on the total uh, number of faculty without working knowledge on ICT, 
uh, there are uh, around uh, 18% of our faculty out of uh, 3,893. 3, and uh, we are uh, saying that uh, the total number of faculty who are already using online teaching platform at the moment is 78%. So we still need to close the gap. There are around uh, 22% which are uh, about to use this online teaching platform. That's why we in PASUK is uh, helping each other to really support our faculty members. Uh, we are talking about the uh, online ready materials for uh, youth of our faculty members. The total number of faculty members with ready available materials, uh, electronic materials, are 82%. Uh, so we are still supporting 18% of our faculty members to produce or develop their uh, online materials. And uh, we are happy to say that uh, even at home, uh, almost all of our faculty members have connection to internet, 99%, uh, Mr. Chair. Total number of faculty whose means of communication is mobile phone only, uh, there are 45%. And uh, of course, others might have laptop, but there are still 45% whose means is uh, still uh, mobile phone. Uh, total number of students who have uh, internet access at home, only around 30% or 31%. Total number of students whose means of communication is mobile phone only, so 37%. And uh, number of students without any means of communication, uh, it's actually uh, 8%. We still need to close this gap, uh, 8%. Uh, 59 uh, SUCs or 75% reported that they are uh, using a uh, learning management system. This has uh, improved a lot, Mr. Chair. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, uh, we initially uh, gave the figure at around 20%, but we responded quickly. We realigned some of our resources so that we can have LMS. Now, we can say that 75% uh, of our SUCs are already using LMS and uh, prepared for the coming school year. <coughs> Most commonly used LMS, G Suite, uh, good to note that uh, uh, there are uh, open source LMS, which are good LMS, the G Suite, the Moodle, uh, even Schoology. There are a lot of pre LMS. And it's, I think, a good transition to uh, use this uh, free LMS. Uh, on the average, there are nine existing computer laboratories per campus, a total of 707 for 79 SUCs existing laboratory in different campuses. Also, on the average, uh, SUC needs an additional of 15 computer labs still, which they have to stop. So, 1,179 for 70 SUCs uh, told us that uh, still there is a need for this uh, additional computer laboratories to support this uh, online learning. Uh, 61 SUCs using the medium of fiber in their internet connection, while 18 are still using copper. So it's also a challenge on the speed of connectivity. Uh, when asked about the average annual budget of SUCs on ICT, this is combined software and hardware in the last three years, is they are spending around uh, 15 million or 15.7. Uh, annual expenditure on ICT. Uh, when asked about the uh, mode of delivery in terms of uh, flexibility, uh, 26 online synchronous or asynchronous modular remote or, or combined, uh, only 33% can participate. Now, uh, these are just some detail and I think I will uh, need to give the copy of this to the chair and uh, as I have mentioned, at the time of this reporting, uh, around 17% we just have uh, to complete, just have uh, to complete, I think, our data. But uh, this is almost as 80%, Mr. Chair, of the responses of our SUCs, Mr. Chair, of the responses of our SUCs. 40% of SUC student population will undergo pure online. Uh, has the capability to uh, go pure online on synchronous teaching and learning, an average of 4,695 for each SUCs. And uh, there 
are 51% of our students who can go only for asynchronous, meaning they cannot participate real time. We have to give the copy in advance so that they can uh, get these learning resources. So almost half, Mr. Chair. So that can be, uh, uh, it can be learned that uh, there is really a challenge on the internet because uh, uh, they cannot participate in real time. 34% uh, of our student population will undergo remote distance uh, uh, teaching and learning, an average of 4,277 for each SUCs. Uh, on the uh, possibility of using radio station for uh, the delivery of uh, teaching and learning, uh, most of our SUCs do not own radio station. Only 26 or 33% of SUCs responding to the survey reported that they own a radio station in their college or university. Uh, prior to COVID-19 pandemic, Mr. Chair, only 10 SUCs, or around 13%, are practicing open distance learning, and most are not, as reported by uh, Chad Chair uh, Popo de Vera. And uh, we are, uh, a number of our SUCs with capability already, even before pandemic, applied to Chad on the uh, a permit to deliver this uh, open distance learning. So these are just uh, some data, uh, Mr. Chair, on these 10 issues. Uh, it, we may uh, learn from this table. Number of students enrolled in open distance learning is only 0.41%. That is uh, uh, the average of 486 uh, for these 10 issues with a total of 4,857. Number of students enrolled in open distance learning in academic year 2019-2020 uh, is only 0.34%, uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, that's why uh, we support no, the passage of this current bill being discussed uh, in this meeting, that uh, there has to be a measure of really ensuring that open distance learning will be available no, and PASO uh, support that it has to be passed without delay, Mr. Chair. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll give you uh, this data after this presentation. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, Joel. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. yes um, apparently, um, as uh, Mr. Ronquillo said, President Ronquillo said, uh, maliban sa DICT, nagsusubscribe pa rin sa Smart Number One, Globe, and other providers. Um, dahil ba walang kwerta yung DICT na nagsusubscribe pa sa iba? Kasi yung intention sa gobyerno niyan, e bibigay yung DICT para makalibre na yung mga iskwelahan natin. E yung pala, doble-doble pa rin ang binabayaran at minimaintain ng ating mga SUC. Is it because uh, the DICT is very, very poor quality? Uh, feel free to say so, uh, because as governor, I opened the one in our uh, local SUC, and uh, during the opening, the internet failed. For your answer, Chairman no, Ronquillo, uh, let me just uh, recognize the uh, chairperson of the Committee on uh, Basic Education, <coughs> Senator uh, Win Gachalian, is uh, with us online. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Wynn, for joining us. And uh, before you answer, uh, uh, Chairman Ronquillo, uh, we'd like to put on record that uh, uh, despite the, the challenges that we are facing today, uh, the, the Bayan Nihan 2 is now on the uh, uh, bicameral conference, and uh, we hope that uh, our dear colleagues, especially Senator Aimi and our chair, Senator Angara, will uh, will uh, continue to support yung uh, amendment natin na 3 billion pesos for our uh, SUCs para SUCs. makatulong po makatulong po sa inyo uh, sa sa gitna nito ng pandemya ito. Sige po uh, Sir Ronquillo, you have uh, the floor. Uh, Mr. Chair, we are happy to note that support uh, initiated by Senate that will really help SUCs as a uh, uh, observed by uh, good Senator uh, Amy Marcos, totoo po, that uh, we still have this internet service provider and we are paying. Uh, we know that the ICT is still rolling this out for all SUCs, but uh, before pandemic po, uh, talaga pong uh, many of our SUCs, 
still resort to this commercial and we have to pay. That is uh, approved by our respective board because there is no available uh, internet uh, which, which is free. So we need to uh, undergo the Republic of 9184 on the procurement of this internet service provider. Now, uh, we are happy that because of this pandemic, uh, DICT now is uh, supporting SUCs and uh, uh, maybe by before this year ends or before the semester, per semester will end, they will be able to roll out for. But take note, I don't know what's the speed or what's the bandwidth which can be available because, of course, the bandwidth will be shared by thousands or millions of students. The Wi-Fi that will be uh, connected to the campuses may not be sufficient because, of course, it has to be shared to uh, all students. And that would be a challenge. Yes, there is presence of the ACT, but uh, that's why we need to resort even to augment our bandwidth requirement to other uh, subscriber or other uh, provider of this uh, internet, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, nandito ba yung DICT? Yes, uh, nandito. Pero mong kinatawa ng DICT? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, be, but before you, before you uh, say something, uh, engineer, uh, President uh, Ronquillo, ano yung percentage? So, ilan yung nagbabayad? Ilan yung uh, hindi na nagbabayad? Uh, I will uh, browse my uh, data, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Okay. Uh, uh, so, it para is, uh, yung uh, need for DICT. Uh, ano pa yung yeah. challenges na kailangan nilang tahakin? Uh, in this uh, in this uh, survey, Mr. Chair, this is a quick survey among our seven hundred SUCs. Uh, there are at the time of this survey recently, I think this until yesterday, there are uh, thirty three SUCs serviced by the ICT, and we have one hundred six campuses in thirty three SUCs. Of course, other SUCs oh, have many campuses, and good to hear, good to hear that. Thank you. Uh, VICT, uh, would you like to uh, respond? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for this may opportunity. I also, may I also ask our uh, guests, uh, resource persons, that if you're not talking, can you uh, mute your uh, computers so we can uh, so we can hear clearly? Pag hindi po kayo recognize, uh, kindly mute your computers, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, engineer, uh -huh. floor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Now, uh, yung free Wi-Fi uh, for all, which is the Republic Act 929, ang nilalagay po nito is for the public use. Wala po itong ano, eh, password. This is for the student. Uh, kaya po may mga several hotspot kami na nilalagay. Uh, not really just for the intention of the operation of the school. Uh, this is before the pandemic. But uh, that's why yung mga school po, yung mga SUC, is still uh, nagsusubscribe pa rin sila. But that is for the purpose of their operation. Uh, yung po yung, kaya yung meron may SUC na meron din sila minimintay na network nila. And then the DICT is putting or installing the free Wi-Fi. This is just for the student, public, or even the teachers that they want, that, uh, want to use the, wi the connectivity. Yung po yung. I'm sorry what you mean. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Eric from the ICT. Ang sinasabi ninyo, yung free Wi-Fi sa campus para lamang gamitin ng mga estudyante in their free time, recreational. Hindi niya kaya yung educational. Hindi ko masyadong naintindihan. Ano yung purpose ng free Wi-Fi kung hindi nagagamit ng classroom? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yung free Wi-Fi kasi, Ang purpose niya, the intention is to give the student, not only in their free time, but uh, to give the student do sa kanilang, para magkaroon sila ng connectivity. Uh, in fact, open... Eh, pero hindi yung, nga magamit sa eskwela. Eh, free Wi-Fi sa eskwela, pre-nioritize, kasi educational tool. Pero kung hindi naman magamit as uh, a teaching mode, eh, para ke pa yung free Wi-Fi, ano yung capacity ng free Wi-Fi ng DICT talaga sa, uh, sa campus? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ngayon po, uh, because of this pandemic, uh, we are closely coordinating with the SUC, kung paano aayusin. Pero ano, yung, ano ang capability? Bigyan mo ang bandwidth uh, 
siya ngayon, pre-COVID, at ano yung pinapangako post-COVID bago matapos ang taon? Uh, ngayon po, ma'am, ang capacity na binibigay ng free Wi-Fi, eh, CIR, uh, Committed Internet Rate, depende po sa SUC. Yung mga SUC na malalaki, uh, we provided 40 MB SU, uh, com Committed Internet Rate. Committed Internet Rate po ito, ma'am, hindi po ito up to. For those small, yung mga annexes nila, Ay, 10 MB po. Now, yun nga, uh, 10 MB po, ma'am. 40 MB po. Pamilya lang yan. Uh, Ma'am, com committed internet po, committed internet rate po siya, Ma'am. Hindi po siya up to. Right now, kasi yung ibang sinusubscribe ng sa telco, up to lang po yun. Uh, it's shared. Opo. Uh, it And why is it, why do they prefer, why do they prefer, sorry, why do they prefer the up to kesa sa DICT kung talagang sinasabi ninyo na Rate. Uh, maybe because na meron pa silang connectivity before, bibago kami maglagay. Uh, ngayon, nung maglagay... Hey, naman, madali naman, naman kung, kung okay sana yung DICT, pinaputol na you can give us the data that you have and at the same time, yung pangako na ma-improve kailan before year end. Kasi yun ang sinabi. Let me merely manifest, Mr. Chair, I have no desire to badger the DICT, but merely to state that, uh, in my opinion at least, I have seen the educational sector um, and their heroic efforts to cope with the pandemic. Uh, but really, we have failed them in terms of the internet and digital infrastructure. Thank you, uh, Senator Aimi. Uh, engineer, yung hinihingi po ni uh, Senator Aimi, uh, submit na lang po sa committee. Thank you. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Before we continue, again, uh, let me ask our uh, our uh, resource persons, distinguished colleagues, to mute your computers, please, uh, para hindi po uh, mag uh, makasapaw maka pamute lang po pag hindi po tayo nagsasalita we'll give the floor to uh, Philippine Association Chair. Of, uh, yes Mr. Chair send me oh, yeah. Nancy okay uh, Senator uh, uh, Bilay we... uh, give the floor to uh, the private sector uh, before tayo pumunta dun sa private sector gusto ko lang itanong kay Press Ronquillo kung ang ibig sabihin ba neto wala tayong SUC na talagang ano lang siya nakarelay sa DICT? Meron ho ba tayong SUC na talagang DICT lang yung ginagamit at walang augmentation from other networks? Uh, ngayon po, uh, Mr. Chair, based on our data that we gathered, uh, here, uh, there are uh, 33 serviced by DICT and still uh, 46 not <laughs> The ACT. Uh, that's why these uh, SUCs, 60 of them, are still being serviced by other uh, internet service provider like so, the internet smart. Uh, so, ibig sabihin ng presong kilo, yung 33, hindi na ho sila nagsusubscribe sa Globe and or Smart. Uh, still, Madam Chair, they are still. Uh, there. Still. Still, uh, still, they are subscribing to other because as presented to uh. colleagues from the ACT, Only at some uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. Uh, mga usually po, mga open spaces. Sa mga classroom po, we need to provide. Katulad po ngayon, naglalagay kami ng Wi-Fi hotspots sa bawat classroom namin. Ang sa DICT po uh -huh. ay sa mga open uh, hotspots lang, lang Kaya po, kailangan pa rin natin subscribe. Let's say sa Batangas uh -huh. University, uh, this time, we need this time around, we need around 3 gigabits po. 10 gbps. Oh, 3 Uh, gigabits per second. Eh, ang uh, connected po, uh, committed internet rate po as per the ACT is around 40 MB. Because we have around 40,000 students, so we need to get a wider bandwidth or a bigger bandwidth to accommodate. Eh, we understand po, uh, there are many SUCs that can be serviced by the ICT, but uh, try to imagine this 40 MB. Talaga pong kulang po ito, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Preso uh, Mr. Chair, siguro pwede pa for submission na lang Um, from the SUCs, baka pwedeng makahingi ng um, comparison dun sa 33 na nasa service na, na, na ng DICT at dun sa hindi, kung magkano yung nagagasas nila dun sa augmentation? 
para lang for us to get a picture kung nakakatipid ba tayo dun sa free wifi for the SUCs or technically it's just the same cost. Mr. Chair. Po, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, please, uh, President Ronquillo, uh, please comply uh, with, with the request of Senator Thank Nancy. You. I think Thank it's you, important Chair. so that we would find out kung gaano kalaki yung naitutulong ng DICT at uh, ano pa yung mga po pwede nilang gawin to improve their uh, services. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman Chair. Rivera, you wanted to say something? Yes, uh, if in uh, the commission President and Ronquillo, the ICT... Can you mute your, your computer? Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Yeah, the commission and the ICT has rolled out a project to measure the connectivity per campus. Because uh, what is happening in many state universities is malakas yung signal sa main. That is where they have invested resources. But the connectivity is very varied across the campuses of each state university. So the ICT has uh, given a measuring tool that we have given out to all the state universities to measure their actual connectivity per campus, so all for the close to 400 campuses. We can submit that data to the uh, committee, Mr. Chair, if that is needed. This data will now be used by the Commission and the ICT to design uh, uh, and prepare for the smart campuses uh, funding that is coming in. We need hard data on the ground because very very valuable across campuses. Uh, yung mga external campuses na malalayo, uh, usually may mga external campuses na wala pang signal hanggang ngayon. In fact, there are some main campuses of SOOCs that have very intermittent to practically no signal because the, uh, the telco providers in the area don't have uh, sufficient uh, uh, towers to send the signals. But we can send that to the a committee, Mr. Chair, but as a general rule, yes, my assessment is practically all SOCs are subscribing to the telcos for internet connection. Uh, that is the reality on the ground because the, the, yes. the signal strength that they need for their operations is very high, not just because of the volume of students, but because of the activities of the university itself. So they have to they have to pay for, uh, they have to pay the telcos to increase their bandwidth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Chairman Popoy, please uh, do so. And I think it would help kahit na isubmit nila para mabangga natin itong mga data na ito. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I'm having a hard time uh, even right now no, uh, with, with my internet connection. But uh, let's give uh, the opportunity now uh, for the representative of uh, PACO, uh, the Philippine Association of Colleges and University President, uh, Caroline Enriquez. Ma'am, you have the floor. To the you have the floor. Yes. Unmute po kayo, ma'am. There. Going from mute to not mute. Aku? Um. Right now. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. We, we can't hear you, and uh, it appears we're having problems with the connection. Okay, ma'am, ma'am, you have the floor now. I think, I think it's uh, clear now. Thank you. Thank you. Can you control me? Young host, can you pass it to me too, na? But allow me to say thank you first to senators, to all the senators for inviting um Paco Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities. Often, we know it's very hard to get so government support, especially for the private sector considering there's really probably not much money going around. So what we have done in the private sector is, um, upon the request also of our chair, chair, is to form some sort of consortium. So with regards to PACU, what we have done with PACU is we have um, negotiated a contract with a U.S.-based um, company so that part of our virtual laboratories 
we have managed to bring down the rate from $50 to about $3 a person, so that in terms of virtual laboratories, we're able to deliver it using quality um, online learning experiences. So what we did is we have about 56 schools from across um, the nation, from Luzon all the way up to Mindanao, who participated in this, and about 60,000 to 70,000 students who can avail of good quality virtual lab experience, especially for the gen ed. And then on top of that also, we have tried several times to talk with IATF um, and also with some of the DICT and asking and putting in a request for internet connectivity, especially fiber optics um, connectivity. Since it's already um, close to our opening of classes, what we did was we negotiated on our own with the different telcos and we asked for special rates for our students in the private sector to which the two telcos man acceded. But nonetheless, it's still a cost to our students. So our special request here, if there's a way that we could be also part of the plans of the government for um, interconnectivity. Although um, what the two telcos have promised us is they are willing to provide free Wi-Fi access in our campus, but only for a short time. Like similar to the experience that you get in the airport when you're given 30 minutes, and the 30 minutes that you will have would be just enough time for you to download your asynchronous materials. So our ask here is if the government could also help us with this request for internet connectivity, maybe through the local government units, because I heard that some of the local government units are already laying out plans for fiber optics connectivity. That's about it, Senator, um, for our ask from the, from the private sector. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, President Enriquez. Uh, we, we'd like to find out if uh, Senator Gechalian or Senator Bina wanted to local colleges and universities. Uh, as regards Senate Bill 1459, establishing tertiary online learning and distance education office, ALCO interposed no objection, particularly uh, setting the prescribed standards for curriculum requirements for online and distance learning, same through with the development of necessary policy guidelines and quality standards for the extensive implementation of online and distance learning uh, in times of uh, emergency. Same through with Senate Bill 1538, uh, setting moratorium on students' loan payment during disaster and other emergencies. And so with Senate Bill 376, uh, defining the preparedness of higher education institution, students and faculty to shift to online modes of learning. And uh, proposed by Senator Villanueva, same through with Senate Bill number 383, uh, defining further the implementation of open distance learning. Uh, please note that uh, the local colleges and universities uh, have been very compliant with the advisory uh, set by the Commission on Higher Education. As early as April 16, 2020, uh, we're able to conduct a survey among 119 local colleges and universities in terms of uh, gadgets and uh, uh, internet connectivity. And uh, while other institutions uh, you know, have much problem on this. Uh, the situation, the local colleges and universities are not similarly situated. Uh, local colleges are uh, usually operating in a certain locality, thus uh, delivery via flexible learning, uh, blended and online is, uh, 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 is uh, very much uh, uh, feasible. And, uh, Seventh uh, advisory, uh, we've requested 119 local colleges and universities to submit that transition plan, uh, which defines the framework on how local colleges uh, will implement uh, the online learning. The Senate bills being proposed today, uh, of course, uh, will uh, define further and will strengthen further the initial implementation of uh, online learning uh, in among local colleges and universities uh, in the Philippines. Um, 
Your Honor, um, the local colleges will submit its, uh, its position paper as regards the bill uh, be now being deliberated. Once again, thank you so much for the opportunity extended to us. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this juncture, uh, uh, Mr. Thank you. Uh, if uh, Senator Gachalian would like to, uh, yes, Senator yes. Gachalian, you have yes. the floor, please. Yes, Peter's Chair, and I am very sorry for uh, being late. I was uh, invited to uh, speak in a webinar. Uh, which ended almost two hours. But uh, I would like, I don't know if this has been tackled uh, earlier, but uh, I would like to know from the chair uh, commissioner, uh, in light of this new MECQ, uh, and also it seems to me that uh, it's becoming quite uncertain again uh, in the next few weeks. I would like to know from uh, Chairman Popoy, uh, what are the guidelines under this MECQ? And uh, what will be the uh, guidelines if ever MECQ uh, will be extended. I know some schools uh, are slated to um, uh, take enrollment or open this time around, no? but uh, I think this MECQ uh, threw out of the plan. So I just want to get some uh, updates from Chad as to the guidelines under MECQ and moving forward, whatever the situation uh, will be. Uh, thank you. Thank before, you. Before you answer, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman Popoy, before before you answer the query of uh, Senator Gachalan, I'd like to also uh, uh, add to that uh, question what you mentioned a while ago about the the access uh, or the status of internet connection to various SUCs in the country, uh, Chairman Popoy, kasi kanina uh, you made mention something which is somehow contrary doon sa statements made uh, in the House of Representatives by uh, Commissioner Alibin. Sabi niya po doon, uh, at least 102 out of the 111 SUCs have internet connectivity and leaving roughly 9 SUCs with no internet connection. So, we just want this to be uh, clarified, no? Uh, we wanted to know what SUCs are these and uh, 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 where they are uh, located and uh, what have been done to uh, to help uh, SUCs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are you mute po kayo? Yeah, let me answer the query of, doc, uh, of uh, Chairman Villanueva first. Uh, when we say uh, connectivity in SOOCs, as a general rule, uh, uh, almost all, kokonti uh, lang yung SOOCs who have not reported at all that they have connectivity. But the problem is the connectivity varies across campuses. That is really the big problem. Uh, the main campus usually has a strong connection. The extension campuses usually have weaker connection, and the state universities have not really invested much to improve the connectivity of their external campuses. So, uh, that, that, so the delivery system, when you say they will now deliver it through flexible mode, the problem is the students in the external campuses. Your main campus, it's not usually a problem in SOOCs. Um, may mga areas na mahina pero meron. So that is the situation. So when when uh, Commissioner Ali bin said there are very few who don't have connectivity, uh, there are really very few. Uh, practically, dun sa report sa amin, halos wala yung nag-claim na wala silang connectivity. Pero may mga campus sila na walang connectivity at all. That is the problem of... Uh, kaya nga, we need the data. That's why we rolled out a project with the IT. So that if we have the data, pag na board meeting yung SOCs and they will, na, the board will now require the president to improve connectivity, the board will know what campuses will be targeted, what will be funded. 
For example, in my case, uh, yung, uh, yung uh, soaks ko na island soaks, ang binigyan ko ng, ng additional uh, funding from CHED ay maglagay ng cable for the external campuses at haponic uh, connectivity. Uh, so we have to be very strategic based on available data of campuses. So we are getting that, we have that data now to make decisions for connectivity. Yung, yung, yung uh, tanong ni Senator Gatchalian, under IATF rules, if it is MACQ, there can be no face-to-face -face classes. So no face-to-face -face classes at all in MECQ. The policy adopted by the, by the IATF for the opening of classes last May 13 was that those that it will be a rolling enrollment based on the delivery mode. So universities that are using full online, they can open as early as June. So some of them have. Uh, Ateneo has, uh, uh, De La Salbinil has, offer, has opened 20 degree programs fully online. So wala tayong problema doon sa online. Those that will be using flexible mode na blended learning, they can open in August. And then the decision of IATF was those who will need significant face-to-face -face can open September or later. But remember, that was in May, and the data on the health situation in May is different from the data now. So we will have to revise that in the IATF to move that portion of significant face-to-face -to, -face, uh, to make sure that the students are safe. So ang umaandal pa lang na mode ngayon, yung full online at saka yung flexible na online and offline. But no face-to-face policy exists. Now, the IATF has also adopted a policy that for MGCQ areas, there will be the option of face-to-face -face so long as they, com they coordinate with local governments, they comply with health protocols, and they comply with CHED guidelines. We have crafted the guidelines already, Mr. Chair, uh, we have consulted both the public and private universities. Two days ago, I consulted with the local governments on uh, rolling it out. But they, we are targeting that this will be done in January when the health situation is, uh, is uh, hopefully under control. And we are initially limiting it to low-risk MGCQ areas. So that is the... That is the uh, a target. So between now and January, we are talking with our universities to check on the ground some universities that are reconfiguring their classrooms and campuses for some face-to-face. -face. And the plan is uh, I will ask uh, my fellow commissioners, I will ask uh, uh, Secretary uh, the, the implementer of the National Task Force on COVID, Secretary Charlie Galvez, to join me. I will ask uh, our friends in the media to join me and also local governments to inspect on the ground how the classroom is being reconfigured for universities that are going to do it. And then we will see a prototype on what is the best uh, way to do it, ventilation-wise, entrance and exit, and tell the other universities, if you plan to have some face-to-face, -face, this is the prototype that you can adopt. I, I, we, we plan to bring the media because the problem now is everybody is operating in a climate of fear, basically. And we need to visualize how the classroom, if ever we will have face-to-face, -face, will look like. I was told by President Caroline Enriquez that Our Lady of Fatima plans to reconfigure their classroom. SPI has also told me. So at the appropriate time when they are ready to show how they, are, they have re-engineered their classroom, uh, I will go on the ground together with Secretary Galvez to see if it is a workable option and then prepare it for the second semester. So realistically, 
even if this was approved by the IATF, realistically, the rollout would be on the second semester because of the health situation that we have right now. So th that would be the response, uh, Senator Kachalia. Oh, uh, Chair Popoy, so in short, uh, as long as it's a uh, MECQ, uh, wala pong face-to-face. -face. There will be no face-to-face. -face. Now, if, yes. the, if the situation improves, for example, it becomes GCQ, are the universities and colleges given, uh, given the discretion to implement, uh, let's say, a uh, flexible learning type of uh, approach? May face to face and online yung, under, under GCQ. Uh, yung GCQ wala pa. Ang inapprove lang ng IATF is under MGCQ. Oh, MGCQ. Okay. Yes, yeah, sa, uh, sa GCQ wala pang approval. So no face to face, uh, uh, no uh, possibility of face to face until uh, uh, GCQ. Yung M -E -G MGCQ. There is a policy already, but we are crafting the guidelines for that. Ang um, MGCQ, are, do you allow face-to-face? -face? Ang MGCQ? Uh, MGCQ. There, is a, there is a policy adopted by the IATF, but the guidelines on how that policy will be done is, is still being crafted, and we want to see the prototype on the ground, if it is feasible, and if it, if it will pass health standards. So okay. that is our plan in the next uh, two months, probably, to see how it will look like. Uh, we will bring our health experts. We will bring our local governments. Kasi, Senator, may mga problema eh, uh, in our discussion with local governments. For example, if there is an infection and we close the university, mm -hmm. who is accountable for bringing them to the proper health facility? Where will they be quarantined, for example? Uh, and you have to work with local governments. There must be a system for the local governments to work with the universities. So if there is an infection, the, the health of the infected person is taken care for. E, iba, iba yung policy ng local governments sa ngayon. So right. that is an area that we have, we have to really look at uh, and make sure that that uh, accountability mechanism is in place who pays for the testing, where will they stay for the quarantine? Uh, are the, are the will we require the health universities to have isolation rooms uh, in the meantime while a student, a faculty or employee, uh, you know, is, uh, is sick? These are things that we still have to go into detail and consult with the local governments and the university. So, in this self-executing yung policy adopted by the IATF, because it says there, in compliance with CHED requirements or CHED guidelines, and the guidelines are still being uh, formalized now. Pero, uh, Chairman, meron na tayong mga areas na under MGCQ and GCQ. May mga areas tayo na nasa GCQ ngayon. No? So, yes, yes. ano ang sinusundan nilang uh, guidelines? In the uh, wala, of... wala pang guidelines. So they cannot have face-to-face -face until the guidelines... So, so the rule is no face-to-face? -face. Yes. Uh -oh. Basically, the rule is no face-to-face -face now. Okay. The projection is the earliest we will be able to do it will be the second semester or in January. Okay. Uh, but I must admit that there are certain areas where the relationship between the local government and the universities uh, is very strong, where they have helped each other, for example, in facilitating the entrance examination of students in, in state universities na wala talagang uh, internet. Kasi yung online exams, may mga campuses na walang internet, so nagtutulungan yung local governments at saka yung university para pwedeng i-bus in yung students in batches so they can take the exam. May mga ganyang arrangement na ginagawa. But this is not regular face-to-face -face classes. These are, uh, these are activities that uh, facilitate the opening of classes so they do not qualify under the prohibition of face-to-face -face classes. My last question, Chairman, is 
if that is the case no uh, under gcq un- under a community quarantine no at the, which covers gcq and ecq uh, you're not uh, or, or the commission is not allowing face to face how many universities now uh, are capable of online uh, learning or flexible learning because i, I know for a fact that uh, uh, transitioning to that online learning is quite expensive, no? Um, here in Valenzuela, yung pamantasa namin, which, uh, by the way, magdadegres ako, thank you, pala na credit na kami, chairman, two days ago. Full accreditation na after three years. No, thank you very much. Uh, full accreditation na ho kami dito sa pamantasa namin. But I, you know, for a fact that we bought, I subscribed and bought uh, an application uh, that can deliver full online learning. Uh, it's not cheap, huh? uh, it's quite expensive, no? and it's subscription-based. How many private, how many universities and colleges, you know, private in, in, and uh, public, kasi split naman ang population yan, 50-50, no? how many of them have subscribed or have transitioned into online learning? Yeah, majority of universities are using blended uh, option in the flexible mode. This is a combination of online and offline. And most of the online is asynchronous because of the weak uh, connectivity or because of other of other issues. So yung offline nila, they are uh, delivering written learning packets and give it to the okay. students to okay. go at home. And then they connect with their faculty members or they submit the requirements, etc. There are very few universities that are doing full online. Okay. These are the top universities that have been doing online before COVID. So this includes Mapua, Ateneo, you know, De La Salle Benil, De La Salle, uh, STI in some of the courses, etc. Majority are in the second option, which is the combination of online and offline. And many of them, most of them, are using uh, free software. They are uh, use, creating a learning yeah. management system using free software. And as they, as they improve later on, if they have the funding, they can migrate to proprietary software yeah. at the appropriate time when their uh, financial situation will allow it. Mm-hmm. Mahirap din kasi kahit may funding yung ibang so, mahirap mag, uh, mag-proprietary software kagad kasi may procurement process. At baka there's not enough time to open the open the classes. So most of them are using free software uh, to do it. Uh, in fact, uh, Siliman University, through a grant of CHED, has developed a learning management system that does not need internet connection. And they, we are giving this for free to the campuses and universities that have weak to no connectivity. So meron silang learning management system. Ang dala-dala ng estudyante at faculty, naka-install yung kanilang materials sa kanilang flash disk or flash drive. Tapos kung meron, meron silang connection, doon lang nila ipapasok para makita nila. So meron, meron ding ganong option na, so a learning management system does not need to be internet-based. There's already an LMS that does not require learning management system. The weak area, I'd like to tell our senators, the weak area is the smaller private universities. These are universities with less than 1,000 student enrollment. They, they comprise more than 1,000 of the total universities that we have. They are the ones that we need to help. So uh, I have taken the position in both the House and the Senate that, that if government gives funds for connectivity, it should not target only the public universities. It should also help the private universities, the small ones. We have to find a way of helping them with connectivity helping them develop their learning management system because it's the smaller private universities that uh, that that have a limited financial capacity uh, and don't have even if they do uh, free software for example they might not have the hard the hardware and the IT people to run a free uh, software uh, and he, wala din naman silang pondo to buy proprietary. So they're stuck 
in between. They're the ones that government needs to help, needs to help. Uh, uh, in, in the three billion that we give, kung pwede, uh, maghanap tayo ng paraan na matulungan yung smaller private universities. Uh, uh, kasi ang marami sa kanila talagang, talagang, kuan, talagang tuition dependent, uh, if the enrollment goes down, they have to lay off people or they have to close for the year. So, hindi, hindi nila kaya mag-transition as fast as the others. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Ch Chairman, Ch 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 just to... Uh, if, if I may, Chairman yeah, Popoy, yeah, please ahead. give us your, your, your recommendation no, doon sa 3 billion. And uh, at the same time, we, we wanted to, to find out ano yung, ito yung binabanggit po niyo, yung mga maliliit na universities that uh, need help. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, Please proceed, uh, Senator yeah, Gachalian. Yeah, lastly lang, Chairman, no, kasi na, I was going to expound also on that 1,000 small and medium universities. Uh, Chairman, kasali sila doon sa sinasabi niyong blended learning in which yes. they have asynchronous mode and also offline mode. And uh, ang... ang Actually, I was going to expound on that because talagang sila yung hirap, no? Because wala silang uh, technical expertise and also the capital to move. And I found out that itong online system, uh, napakamahal, no? It's not, uh, it's not cheap, no? And uh, those small universities might have a very difficult time to, to, uh, to acquire that. And uh, looking at the student population, 50-50 kasi ang private and uh, ang public, eh. So, malaking chunk ng college population natin na sa private. So, ang fear ko lang, if we don't help the small and medium universities, private universities, 50%, no? more, more than 50% of our population in our universities will be affected. No? So, it, it, I just want to bring that out. And I know the chairman uh, of the uh, higher education is on top of this. Uh, in fact, yan ang passion niya. So, I just want to bring that out that in our tertiary education, kalahati po ng population natin nasa pribadong eskwelahan. So if we don't look at them, uh, we will have uh, some problem in, in delivering education to our half of our college population. Uh, actually, Mr. Actually, Chair. Mr. actually, Mr. Chair, the data is we have more students in private universities than public universities. Hmm. The split is about 55 to 45 percent. Okay. And... Uh, and one of the things that we are doing very aggressively through the Bayanihan uh, training program of CHED is yung uh, training for teachers. We're targeting the teachers of the smaller private universities because there are six top universities that have approached CHED and they say we will give free training. You don't have to pay us. And these are very good universities like the La Salle College of St. Benil, the FEU, uh, Philippine Normal University. So yung training program nila, ang target lang yung uh, faculty of smaller universities. So we did an inventory and we found out that if you total the students of the more than 1,000 small private universities, aabot yan sa pinakamaliit 300,000 students. So it's a big, uh, a big population that is going to be affected if the smaller private universities are not able to do good, flexible learning. Kasi uh, um, there are, if you use proprietary software for your LMS, libre nga, pero kailangan mo ng mainframe, kailangan mo ng hardware, tsaka kailangan mo ng IT people to run it. So may cost pa rin. Kung magsusubscribe ka naman sa Canvas tsaka sa Blackboard, masyadong mahal para sa small private universities ito. So that that is the situation that we have to we have to uh, we have to address, uh, and I and hope and I hope in the three billion we can put money for connectivity of the of the smaller private universities. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Chairman Popoy, and uh, please again uh, to remind you that uh, we will be looking forward to your recommendation because. We're about to start our bicameral conference, and two of our uh, uh, representatives are here, Senator Ivy Marcos and Senator Pia Cayetano, and uh, we have been uh, looking forward to, uh, uh, to this particular item so that we can help our uh, SUCs. And uh, also, Mr. Uh, it's Chair? important to note, yeah. yes. 
Mr. Chair, we submitted last night already the breakdown last of night. the of the three billion and uh, the uh, executive director of CHED uh, and our head of finance who went there. Uh, ang problema kasi yung the ICT ang mandate niya is for public or for government uh, facilities ang bibigyan ng connection. Uh, pwedeng gawan natin ng way by which uh, connectivity of uh, smaller private universities can also wow, be wala. targeted. Uh, kasi yung, uh, the DICT is working basically with the SOOCs and LOOCs. Uh, we have to find a way to help the smaller private universities. But we have submitted the breakdown already uh, last night. Um, Yes, Chairman Popoy. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't, I don't have it yet. We don't have it yet uh, in the office. I don't know. Is it? Did you submit it to the committee to the Comsec? I think to the to the people from the House of Rep because they were the ones who asked for it. So we have submitted it. Uh, I think I, I'm not sure who they submitted it. to the Senate, but we can we can resubmit it. Uh, uh, now, Mr. Chair, uh, if, uh, please, please. if you would want. Please, please, so that we can uh, forward it to our representatives in the bicameral conference. And uh, again, thank you. No? And uh, again, it's important to note yung uh, uh, binanggit kanina ng ating uh, PACU president, no? yung uh, uh, plead nila for help uh, for internet connectivity. And at the same time, uh, Chairman Popo, yung subsidy for students, yung TES, I think it's, it's very important uh, uh, for them na hindi uh, uh, maunsyame, hindi rin ma, ma, ma stop. Uh, at this juncture... Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Senator Marcos, your recognition. Yes, Mr. Chair, I just uh, wanted to uh, send my wholehearted support um, to Chairman Popoy as well as Senator Sherwin um, so regarding the uh, very uh, vulnerable and high risk at this point, uh, small private universities, na paraming lang problem, hindi lang yung IT. Ang totoo, diminishing yung enrollment. Pagkat uh, sa probinsya, ang karamihan na nag-e-enroll dyan, anak ng OFW, eh, sa dinami-dami na nag repatriate natin OFW, may mga small universities tayo, yung mga IT and other, other uh, colleges na talagang nangangalahate at mas malubha pa yung kanilang enrollment. Kaya ako, I have no uh, prejudice unlike some uh, in government about uh, lending support whether they be in student vouchers or in outright uh, IT sub uh, subsidies for these uh, smaller uh, colleges. We need them and they are really folding as it is because of the OFW uh, exodus. Thank you, Pop. Uh, Senator uh, Aimi, if our uh, distinguished colleague from the Senate would like to uh, uh, comment or, 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 or ask questions, uh, feel, feel free to do so. Actually, this is my second unit now. I'm still having problems with my connection. Kanina nasa Globe ako, ngayon nasa PLDT na ako, and I'm still having a hard time uh, uh, connecting and uh, uh, getting a good uh, uh, reception or, or signal. Uh, at this juncture, uh, can we just give the floor to uh, the Department of Labor and Employment? We have here with us uh, Asik uh, Niki Tutay. Uh, a while ago, we, we made mention about the importance of uh, uh, open distance learning. And uh, last Congress, we passed the Philippine Qualifications Framework. I think Senator Toll, Senator Pia, even Senator Sherwin, who, who made a, 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 a very... Uh, 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 important uh, statement a while ago. He's also, by the way, vice chair of this uh, Committee on Higher Technical and uh, Vocational Education Committee. Uh, we, we are also uh, uh, um, uh, uh, looking forward to the report and update on the uh, PQF, uh, what do you call that, council, no? Uh, uh, headed by DepEd and uh, member Ang Ched, Ang Tesda, Ang Dole, perhaps we could get an update uh, as, as DDG Rose or Daneta made mention a while ago about the importance of harmonizing and uh, to ensure that uh, uh, 
uh, will be able to institutionalize uh, these uh, different modes or modalities na, na pinapatupad ho natin. But anyway, let's give the floor lang to... Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yeah, uh, just, Chairman Popoy. Yeah, i just like to correct myself. I just got the correct data. The enrollment for the smaller private universities within with student population of 1,000 or less is actually 525,000 students, not 300,000 as I said earlier. Just okay. for the record, uh, I might be quoted with the wrong more. data. Yeah, it's actually more. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chairman Popoy. We give the floor now to uh, Aseka Niki to type. Perhaps we could uh, hear her with regard to uh, emerging jobs uh, and with regard to what we are talking about. Thank you. Asik Niki, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Okay, can I be heard, Po? Please proceed. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, Po, belated happy birthday, sir. <laughs> At saka, uh, ano po, sa lahat po ng members po of the committee and all the resource person, magandang hapon po sa ngalan po ng aming kalihim, Bebot Bellio. Uh, gusto po namin na uh, i-, i pahayag ang amin pong suporta dito po sa initiative po na ito. And uh, there are uh, about four or six points that I'd like to make. Una po, yung uh, proposed bill po is very timely because of the health and safety of the learners and education providers under the new normal. Secondly, uh, it is a very responsive to the call of the fourth industrial revolution characterized by digitalization and IT-enabled systems. Uh, pangatlo po, from the Philippine Qualifications Framework perspective, it serves as an avenue for learners to learn or to earn degrees and competencies, including credits, at any stage of education and training processes. And therefore, um, it facilitates the ladderized approach and credit transfer. Pangapat, uh, we'd like to state that uh, the bill would enhance the information and technology application competencies of the supply side. Note that uh, this is one of the important um, competencies the demand side requires in the labor market. Uh, there are just two uh, proposals that we'd like to, to put forward, Mr. Chair, uh, to support the bill. We, have, we need to have uh, a strengthened infrastructure and make it available as well, especially for those who don't have the means in life, as was pointed out by Senator Bongo earlier. And secondly, Mr. Chair, uh, there's a need for capacity building for our uh, faculty. So, uh, yun lamang po ang gustong ipahayag at the moment ng Department of Labor and Employment and we look forward po sa passage po ng bill na ito. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Asik, uh, Nikki. No, at present lang, just, just, just uh, one uh, quick question. How do you monitor right now the compliance of uh, uh, higher education institutions to... Uh, the provision under uh, CHED Advisory Number 7, uh, which requires HEIs to facilitate um, and or ensure that uh, transportation uh, services and personal protective equipment are provided uh, to its uh, skeleton uh, workforce. I, 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 I ask this question because uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm very passionate about it. I'm, I'm sure you know, you, you know my, my passion about this because we wanted to make sure that we have a, a, a concrete plan to, to, to issue uh, these uh, uh, guidelines or perhaps, I don't know, kung, may, kung pwede mag-issue or may na-issue na na joint guidelines on the protocols that must be in place to maintain the safety and health of our workers and uh, students inside the uh, school premises. Opo, meron naman po tayong in place na labor advisory, Mr. Chair, when it comes to observance of the proto health protocols uh, under the IATAF guidelines. Uh, there's a monitoring that we conduct not just on the educational 
uh, institution but all types of uh, establishments, Mr. Chair. Uh, kaya lang po, meron po kaming nare-receive na reports na yun pong mga transport services po or even po yung lodging facilities ng ilang uh, education uh, institutions ay charge po nila sa kanilang mga empleyado din at binabawas po ito sa sweldo. So, uh, eto, eto po siguro ang kailangang ma-address ma po uh, dahil nagre-reklamo po yung ating mga uh, teachers po regarding uh, this practice, uh, Your Honor. Uh, uh, sec, uh, Nikki, perhaps it, there's a need uh, to have a joint guidelines between Dole and uh, Ched if, if, if that's okay with, with our uh, uh, chairman uh, De Vera kasi para specific no yung uh, ano natin uh, pang schools talaga opo uh, we're, we're open to that, Mr. Chair and we will partner po with uh, Commissioner Popoy a uh, Chair Popoy oh, sige uh, please no andiyan naman si uh, Chair Popoy I think okay naman sa kanila Chair Popoy Yes Mr. Chair we will instruct our executive director to call uh, you uh, set to tie immediately within the day. Thank you very much. Uh, we give the floor now to uh, Miss Caroline Enriquez, who's uh, raising her hand kanina. Uh, Ma'am, you have the floor. Yes, um, I was just going to... Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I was just going to relate that um, we, we're doing a running survey among Cocopeya schools. Cocopeya is the organization of five associations of private schools. So what we have right now, out of 610 respondents, 610 schools, um, in the basic education, they're expecting something like 20% um, of their students are not coming back. In the higher education, it goes anywhere from 60 to 10%. Six, 10 to 60% decrease in um, enrollment. So as you move along, we will have the final um, details, how many schools were affected, how many of our students did not return, and we shall first disseminate a copy of these um, findings because it's important. It also has some um, records on how many teachers will probably be retrenched. So we'll give you updates on that because as we move along, it's really very difficult to have the students enroll in private schools right now because many of our students are coming from OFW families and um, families whose uh, parents lost their jobs because of the COVID. To Senator. President uh, Enriquez, just, just, just one question, no, no, uh, uh, just to be clarified, to date po, how many how many private colleges and uh, universities um, yung nagpadama or uh, uh, nagsabi that, that they, na mag, magkuklose sila or situation of operations due to the pandemic? May, may, may data po ba tayo na? Sir, we, we don't have the data as far as ilan yung magsasara because we're still doing our enrollments. My fear here is maybe this year nilang tawirin eh. But then later on, if it continues, then there's a big chance that they might be closing by next year. Um, what we see by right now, year. yes, what we see right now, sir, um, would be a lot of um, schools that have really a decrease in enrollment. And very scary because we're looking at an average of 50 percent. Um, it's in our 50 percent, is that correct? 50? 40 to 60, sir. 40 to 60 percent. Wow. Yes, sir. And, and, and ma'am, uh, do we have any uh, data or, or, or at least a, an estimate of how many private uh, HEIs have plans on uh, retrenchment or uh, you know, mass, mass retrenchment of uh, workers? Kasi may mga teaching and non-teaching personnel po na sumusulat sa atin um uh, Meron na sila mga anxieties no? uh, na baka maaari or, or, or maaari na malay off po sila ng mga uh, private universities and colleges na ito. Because we're still conducting our data. And some of the schools are still doing their enrollments. So some a lot of our schools pushed down 
start of classes. Initially, dapat first week of August nag-start na sila, but because it's coming in really very slow. In fact, we were talking about it this morning. We have converted some of our schools into semi-call centers because of poor connectivity. Yung enrollment that should be online, mahirap habulian. So we're, we're doing our SMS, we're doing our emails, we're doing all of those just to get the students on board. But as soon as we get it, we hope to finish the, the survey by the um, third week of August. We'll give you a copy of the, the scenario in private education. What the schools are doing right now, um, if let's say they're not able to catch or uh, to reach the, 30, the 50%, which is something like their um, cutoff, whether they, they will retrench or not retrench, um, some are putting their teachers on floating status. Just to run it out, so hopefully by January, sana dubame yung enrollment. Because people are now engaged and they see the value of continuing their education, whether it's just online or other flexible modes. Because really, um, what we also need to address is the fear of parents on whether the experience on, quality, on online education will be the same as a face-to-face. So it's really hard to get them on board with regards to concept and that mindset. But we hope we deliver it correctly. Um, but due to the experience, uh, then you might get more students on board. So, can you mute your computer, please? Senator Yes, uh, President Arturiga, just a minute. Thank, thank you very much, uh, President Enriquez. Uh, we look forward to uh, that uh, copy of your uh, survey, of your report. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we want you to know, uh, nandito ko kami yung Senado for, for PACO, if there's anything we can do. No? Uh, we give the floor now to uh, uh, President Arcega, who's uh, raising his hand. Uh, sir, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Senator. Um, that's why the ALCO and Alcohoa have been very supportive of the proposition of the private school no? and Cocopea, uh, then also represented by Attorney Estrada. We're happy to hear from Senator Jaime Marcos on the possibility of providing a voucher, no? just like what we're doing in the senior high school, to private education. While we belong to the public sector, um, we know how it feels, no? Uh, those who are in the private sector. And we don't want to see more schools, private schools closing because, you know, uh, the reason why we're doing well in the education sector uh, was because we've been using private schools, as you see, know, as our benchmark you know, in delivering quality education. So I just hope um, through your leadership, Senator Villanueva and Senator Amy Marcos and the rest of the members of the higher and technical uh, education, uh, that... Uh, you, you continue that you be able to support no by providing uh, not only voucher like K to 12 but some sort of subsidy to uh, to the private university while there is a law I don't know what law is prohibiting us using resources for uh, private corporations no I hope private uh, schools no while a private corporation may be exempted from from these limitations because the mandate of private schools, are similar to that of public and SUC, which is about the promotion of uh, ed quality education road to um, eliminating poverty you know, and uh, uh, establishing equilibrium. So the ALCO on record uh, for many times has been very supportive of the position of uh, Pocopea, of PACO, and of the entire private institutions, you know, asking the government to seriously provide subsidy you know, so that they can play well in the field of this competition that we have right now. At this point, also, Senator Villanueva, I would like to uh, maximize the presence of our good friend, ASEC uh, Nikki from Dole, no? that while uh, in their uh, attempt to define no, policies during pandemic, no, uh, hope they will include our students who are on actual OJT. But other than that, Senator Villanueva, uh, I would like to call Dole uh, to our good friend ASEC uh, two times, you know, the possibility of 
uh, assisting also um, educational institutions no, to reinvent, to recreate OJT program. As you all know, um, aside from laboratory uh, delivery of instructions, no, it's part, part of the curriculum is, of course, OJT. And OJT program, field study, and laboratories are uh, provisions in the curriculum that it's in, that it's impossible for you to deliver online. No? And yet, uh, you still have to deliver OJT, uh, laboratory and field study, no? because it's part of the curriculum. We would appreciate from Dole on how they can facilitate uh, uh, in, from the industry no? accepting OJT uh, that has no residential, uh, that they, where the kids doesn't have to report uh, personally or residential in the in the company so uh yes uh, president arcega we wanted to you to know that uh, there's a bill pending here in the senate uh, uh that will tackle this enterprise based uh, uh program and uh we'll, 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 we'll definitely monitor this uh, particular uh, measure though right now there are some companies mr chair uh from the IT sector that are willing to accept OJT via online. But there, there are hundreds of courses no, that cannot be delivered online, that has to be delivered face-to-face. Um, -face. So once again, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And uh, we're at this issue to the Department of Labor and Employment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, President Arcega. With uh, your indulgence, can you mute your Computer, please. Uh, we give the floor now to uh, Senator Tolentino. I think uh, he wanted to, to to raise something. Yes, Senator Tolentino, you have the floor. Mr. Chair, makikinig ka ako. Makikinig lang ako muna. Hindi ko laptop tong ginagamit ko eh. Kaya hindi ko ma-operate. Okay, thank you, uh, Senator Tolentino. Actually, believe it or not, this is my second iPad, second unit. I was... Uh, connected to uh, Globe Canina. Now I'm in uh, with PLDT and I'm still having a hard time. Uh, let, at this juncture, let's give the floor now and we wanted to listen uh, 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 for, from the uh, convenor of uh, Students' Rights and the Welfare Coalition, uh, Troy uh, Tariela. Uh, are you there? Magandang hapon po. Naririnig po ba ako? Yes. Yes, uh, you have the floor, sir. Please, uh, Sir Julian. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, the Honorable Senators, and all the resource, resource persons and staff supporting the National Student Tree. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education for inviting the Student Council Alliance of the Philippines and Students' Rights and Welfare Philippines to this consultation. Um, on behalf of all the students in the Philippines, I suppose we are thankful and welcome these bills and resolutions uh, to aid students and refine the practice of online education. However, I would also like to manifest that there still remain several concerns for the national student tree. Uh, the first among which are on transparent monitoring and evaluation mechanisms for academic requirements and materials, and consequently the standardization of these requirements and materials together with protocols and procedures that protect students', and students rights. Uh, perhaps uh, this also goes to show nga na in the context of online classes, students are increasingly vulnerable uh, to students' rights abuses. And this is why, I suppose now more than ever, uh, important po na magkaroon ng standardization on the protocols and procedures that protect students' rights. And ultimately, perhaps uh, calling for a movement to revive uh, the larger passage of, this, of a students' rights and welfare bill itself. Uh, right now, we have seen that universities, uh, although they have a capacity to, to shift online learning, uh, learning and interactions are conducted using online platforms uh, that not all students have access to. Uh, students saw an increase in academic requirements despite the limitations in procuring mat uh, materials needed to fulfill the requirements. And students have also experienced differ different and varying internet speeds and different uh, varying workloads. And this is perhaps increasingly problematic on the side of a student. Because uh, I suppose, similar to what uh, Senator Marcos said earlier, 
uh, some 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 courses or some universities simply become uh, diploma mills, whereas other universities naman have increasingly high requirements for students, which renders uh, the playing fi- playing field uh, very unfair. Uh, all in all, these contexts limit educational productivity and hinder students to fulfill not only the requirements but to maximize. Uh, their own their own educational attainment. The second concern that we'd like to bring up is on tuition and fees. All the while, it is laudable that Senate Bill Number no. One Five Three Eight places a moratorium on student loans, which is incredibly helpful uh, for students who are financially affected during these trying times. Uh, the reality is, universities still lack transparency in terms of providing ample computations. Uh, I suppose a case that I would like to share with you. Uh, my dear senators, is the case of that of Mapua University, where uh, the university administration failed to present the computation as to how rebates were computed despite the request for complete transparency. Uh, and this happens to a myriad of educational institutions across the Philippines. Uh, some universities have also pushed on with their semester or term, uh, where students report that these universities still charge the student body with the exact same cost of tuition fees despite all learning interactions happening through online platforms. So perhaps uh, there should be some sort of intervention from the Commission on Higher Education and perhaps also the Department of Education uh, in addressing uh, transparency concerns when it comes to how educational institutions have computed uh, their tuition fees and whether or not they will actually be giving rebates for the semester that was previously cut short due to the advent of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, the third concern that we'd like to manifest is the still apparent lack of, of accessibility to online learning. Uh, we acknowledge that while academic requirements stay the same for all students, uh, we would like to reiterate that not everyone has the same access to a fast and reliable internet connection. There are apparent reports yeah, that students go to ridiculous extents where they even climb mountains just to find reliable inter- internet connections. Uh, to submit the requirements. That is why it is increasingly important to continue boosting subsidization for both private and public educational institutions that are financially struggling. Um, with all of that, I would like to close my manifestation on our concerns. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you much, uh, Mr. Uh, Tariela. No, just, just one uh, quick question uh, with regard to this uh, uh, particular topic. How was the shift uh, to blended learning affected the mental health of our students. Perhaps you can give us a bird's eye view of uh, how this is being, uh, 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 I mean, in the implementation of uh, blended learning, how, how does it affect our, our, our students' uh, mental health? All right. Uh, so I suppose the experience you know, of online classes varies uh, across different educational institutions. Um, and all the while, there are universities and colleges similar to uh, Ateneo and De La Salle that are able to provide uh, institutions uh, that, help men- uh, that help students cope with their mental health issues or mental health concerns during this uh, online learning context. The reality is uh, not a lot of educational institutions have that capacity, aren't afforded that luxury. Um, and we have to understand that online learning poses very individual contexts. Um, there, there are some students who have to grapple with the harsh reality. that They have abusive households, for example. Uh, some students have to grapple with the harsh reality in a... Uh, but the yung workload nila, and they don't have internet for days. May alam na labigla na may requirements on the last day of submission, and this is increasingly detrimental nga to mental health. Uh, I suppose uh, online classes, uh, are, you know, are, 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 uh, don't don't have a single lived experience, but it is increasingly important for. I suppose not not only at the educational institutions, but uh, CHED and DepEd themselves, together with TESDA, to provide alternative uh, avenues for these students to seek uh, mental health treatment. 
Thank you very much. I will take note of that, and uh, perhaps that's that, that's really very important. Uh, can we hear now from uh, uh, the Council of P oh, Okay, uh, Senator Aimee, uh, before uh, before we hear uh, uh, the convener from uh, colleges and universities of the Philippines, the Council of Teachers, we'll hear from Senator Aimee Marcos. Yes, uh, Senator Marcos, you're recognized. Yes, thank you very much. Just uh, two brief manifestations in as much as uh, Senator Lapid's bill on uh, tuition uh, freeze has already been mentioned um, by Mr. Tariela of Straw and uh, the students groups. Um, na una, na may resolution ako para investigahan yung ating tuition fees na hindi maintindihan ng karamihan ng magulang at mga Yung miscellaneous, samantarang wala naman pupunta sa lab, wala naman pupunta at kagamit ng internet sa eskwela, wala na nga face-to-face, may classroom. Kaya sana maimbestigahan itong uh, tuition fees na nabanggit na rin ng ating mga student representatives. It's uh, Senate Resolution 480. And dito si uh, Majo, kaya kaya-kaya mag-schedule yan. The other thing that I wanted to mention, in as much as inequities in distribution of government aid was mentioned also by uh, Mr. Tariela, was that I'm very concerned while uh, we support the Lapid Bill and uh, the forbearance required in the collection of tuition fees, may I simply say that the priority must be given to students whose family income levels really fall below the poverty threshold. Kasi minsan siya, dahil ang pamimigay, nakita naman natin ang kaguluhan ng siya, malamang magandang uh, gamitin yung fees data na kinokollect ng PSA at DSWD, yung Family Income and Expenditure Survey para makatarungan naman ang pagbibigay at pamamahagi nitong uh, mga tuition and other assistance na iniisip natin. Yun lang po. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Senator uh, Marcos, before we give the floor to our majority floor leader or uh, Senator Tolentino, perhaps we could ask our representative from CHED if uh, Chairman Popoy uh, can 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 give us an idea how many universities and colleges uh, will implement tuition fee increase this uh, incoming academic year 2020-2021? Chair Popoy? He's, he's logged in, but uh, we, we, we can't see any uh, video. Eh. But anyway, we'll, we'll get back to... Uh, Chair Popoy, uh, if there's anything you'd like to uh, uh, add or say, comment, uh, Majority Leader, Senator Tolentino. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you to my distinguished um, chairman of the Committee on Labor and Committee on Higher Education. Um, on the onset, I just want to say that I fully support your endeavors today <clears throat> to find out a way to be able to... Uh, make our people uh, to give more efficient service to online education, online schooling, lalo na ngayon during this time of pandemic. Um, we are very, very, um, you know, it's new normal. So we're in a very, very, uh, I'd say, uh, difficult time when it comes to educating our students uh, online. Kami lalo na sa Bukidnon, you know, uh, dear chairman, I mean, Kagen de Oro, Boundary Bukidnon, this is where I stay. So um, I always get the feedback from um, our colleagues there, our fellow government workers, the difficulty on how they will implement the DepEd um, school program this starting this August 22. Uh, lalo, lalo na, we have two SUCs, which is uh, Bukidnon State University and um, Central Mindanao University. So I believe, and I'm sure uh, Chairman Devera will uh, uh uh, will um, brief us on this, that there will be no online, or rather, there will be no face-to-face -face classes at this point in time. Um, si since we still also have the virus, although the small amount or small scale in Northern Mindanao, but we have the virus here as well. Um, we therefore, the difficulty of going online in, an, in a situation, Mr. Chairman, na walang internet. Alam mo sa amin sa bukid nun, twilight zone kami when I leave Cagayan de Oro, wala pa kami, hindi pa kami na sa boundary ng Bukidnon. Sa ano pa lang, highland ng 
Dagyan di oro going up to Bukidnon. Wala na kaming signal. Walang data. And even in my house in uh, Maramag, San Miguel, Maramag, Bukidnon, I have to go under a santol tree. Literally, I am not kidding you, Chairman. There is a one santol tree in our farm that I have to go to to only get my signal and data there. So, pag hindi nga ako sumasagot sa inyo, pag nasa probinsya ako, hindi dahil sinasnap ko po kayo. Ibig sabihin, wala talaga akong ka kakuting na signal. So, um, that, that is the difficulty. And I think uh, the challenge is much less in NCR and uh, Greater Manila area, which is the uh, Calabarzon and um, the uh, uh, Region 3, no? the areas of uh, Bulacan and and uh, your your province, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, the neighboring provinces. But in Visayas and Mindanao, it is a challenge from Sikihor to uh, even parts of Panay in uh, the uh, area of uh, Tita Ganda in uh, Antique. Talagang, these are the challenges that we have to um, uh, overcome no, and face uh, for online education for the higher education system, which is the universities and colleges. Um, although I'm a product of, uh, of uh, distance learning, uh, Chairman, I am a graduate of UPOU, University of uh, the Philippines Open University, uh, and the, the campus is in Los Baños near UPLB, and I am a graduate of uh, Master's in Environment and Natural Resources Management. So it works. It can be done. It can be done. It's a bit more challenging because mas gusto ko talaga face to face. Eh. It's nice to interact with the teachers, but because I was a senator, it was also it gave me an opportunity to be able to do my work at the same time as continue my um, um, education and uh, your postgraduate education. It works. You know, lang it's a challenge. So I'm here to support you, Chairman. Your measures that you're going to pass para lalong palakasin itong online education. Siguro ang challenge yan nasa DICT. Di ba po? Kasi the problem of internet is really with the uh, DICT and uh, and uh, the infrastructure, which you call the, the internet infrastructure. I'm also here to support your student loan payment moratorium and other measures that will uh, be able to help our students cope up, lalong lalo na sa pandemyang ito. I think uh, people want to hear good news. Uh, every time we read the, the new, read the news or watch the news on TV, it seems to be bad news after bad news, one after the other. So I think um, we're looking forward for you to be able to come up with your committee report, uh, Chairman, and in the floor, I promise you, we will support together with Senator Winga Chalyan. Senator Winga Chalyan has several scholars Nice, very pretty scholars, Mr. Chairman. I think they're only women scholars that he he has. <laughs> Kidding aside, Mr. Chairman, I'm here to support. And uh, I thank, of course, our colleagues for joining this uh, very interesting conversation and very interesting hearing. Maraming salamat to, Chair. Thanks, uh, Majority Floor Leader, for, um, for that uh, very uh, uh, inspiring uh, statement. And especially for clarifying that you are not ghosting majority leader. It's, there's really, you're really having a hard time with your internet connectivity. In fact, I have to tell you that this is my second unit now. I was logged into Globe the, uh, in the beginning of this uh, hearing. Now I'm with PLDT. I'm still having a hard time. So it's not really just in Bukidnon or Cagayan de Oro or, or in Ilocos. Kanina si Senator Aimee is also lagging. Uh, that's why it's really hard no, to... to uh, kanina pinag-uusapan natin, online learning, eh, itong online hearing nga, nahihirapan tayo. So, uh, it's a big challenge uh, for all of us. Anyway, uh, Chairman Popoy is uh, with us. Uh, Chairman Popoy, we were uh, uh, talking a while ago about the tuition fee increase. May we know if uh, there are updates uh, that we can uh, hear from Ched, how many universities or colleges will implement tuition fee increase in this coming uh, academic school year, 2020 to 2021? Uh, before I go to the tuition increase, Mr. Chair, if you will allow, uh, let, let me just reiterate that the policy of the Commission is not online learning. It is flexible learning. And flexible learning has three modes. One is to do full online. The second one is to combine online and offline. And the third one is to have more face-to-face, uh, -face and a little bit of offline. Uh, I think the students, when they comment, they attack the CHED for supporting an online policy. The policy of the commission is to 
allow the universities to be flexible. And majority of them are not doing full online. The only ones doing full online are the top universities that have already full capability to do it, like De La Salbinil, UP Open U, Mapua, and the others. But the biggest number of universities are doing a combination of online and offline. And the online that they are using is also not synchronous, meaning it is not holding sub-sessions all the time. Many of the online options is asynchronous, meaning you assign materials that are available online to be done by students at their own pace, at their own time, and to connect with the teacher electronically on an, on an online option for consultation, for discussion, and possible classes. So uh, the offline options is to develop learning packets, written materials, printed materials that can be given to students to do at home and to be submitted for assessment at regular schedules for the semester. So yun ho yung range. So uh, mahirap ho kasi pag sinabing online ang policy ng CHED uh, kasi nga madaming areas na na mahina ang connectivity and we recognize that the connectivity is an issue that cannot be solved overnight. Uh, I would like also like to inform Senator Subiri na meron ng offline na learning management system dinevelop ng Siliman University. You don't need internet connection to have a learning management system. The students and the teachers can be connected only when they go to a computer para makakonek, makasubmit ng requirements without physically going to the classroom. Having said that, Mr. Chair, uh, in the first quarter of 2020, that is usually the time when private universities apply for tuition because they used to open classes in June. We, the commission received close to 400 applications for tuition increase. But that was before COVID. So last May, we sent back all the applications for tuition increase to the to the uh, to the universities and told them, "Are you still going to apply? And if you're going to apply for increase, you have to do new consultation with the students and the faculty because flexible learning na yung iya apply the system. And out of the close to four hundred. Uh, and we gave them a deadline to apply last July 1. So as of now, out of the close to 400 applications, there are only 89 applications that were submitted in the different regional offices of CHED. So the 89 represents about 5% of all private universities and colleges. So konti lang ho talaga yung nag-apply kasi... Uh, the, the private universities also know that uh, students are hard up, uh, there are loss of jobs, etc. So the tuition and miscellaneous fee increases are still being evaluated by our regional offices now. Uh, the evaluation and decision is actually done in the region. So I am not in a position to, to tell the commission how many has been uh, the, the Senate, how many has been approved by now. But as soon as the data is available, I will submit it, uh, Mr. Chair. Ang problem ngayon is not the application for tuition. Eh. It is the existing tuition and miscellaneous fees being collected. Kasi hindi naintindihan ng mga magulang at mga estudyante ano yung basis nung nagbabayad pa sila kahit na flexible na ang learning. So we have told the universities to discuss this with the students kasi iba-iba talaga ang fee structure across universities. It is difficult, if not impossible, for the commission to unilaterally, you know, uh, tell universities how to do it because iba-iba yung fee structure nila eh. What we have done in the university, in the commission, is we have identified the costs associated with shifting to flexible learning. Ano ba yung cost na may incur ng mga universities? And uh, we discussed this in the National Directorate meeting yesterday because we already have the data and the reports from all our regional offices. 
and we will send this to the private universities uh, uh, at the latest next week when the commission and bank meets. Ang hiningi ng private universities is to be allowed to reclassify yung existing miscellaneous fees nila and to use that money for the new cost associated with flexible learning. That is what they have requested the commission. Kaya ang ginawa ng commission, we, we enumerated the cost associated with flexible learning and we will now tell the private universities in your discussions with the students and the faculty, explain to them and uh, inform them how the existing miscellaneous fees that are going to be collected will be used not for the original purpose, but for adjustment to flexible learning. So that is the action that the commission uh, has decided yesterday and will be submitted uh, to the private universities next week. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Senator Aimee is raising Mr. Chair. Uh, and then Senator Pilia. Senator Aimee, 89, 89 na lang daw yung nag-apply. Uh, you have the floor, Senator Aimee. Yes, thank you very much. Um, as I stated in uh, Senate Resolution that I filed, number 480, ang inireklamo, hindi lamang yung tuition, kasi tulad nga ng sinabi ni uh, Popoy, eh, bumagsak na sa 89 applications na lamang. So bakit ang hindi talaga maintindihan ng magulang at mga anak, eh kung bakit uh, may laboratory fees, may library fees, may additional medical and dental fees, may paggamit ng internet, at saka yung paggamit rin ng computer, tapos may energy consumption na uh, miscellaneous fee pa. Eh, samantalang under 21 years old nga naman yung karamihan ng estudyante, bawal lumabas ngayon na COVID nga at uh, bumalik pa tayo sa MECQ, eh bakit magbabayad pa ng katakot-takot? Um, I think that... Um, Perhaps Chair Popoy is right in saying that, in fact, there needs to be further explanation of this miscellaneous fees, um, which somehow uh, evade the requirement that they should first be applied at a uh, CHED in the event of an increase. At ipaliwanag na mo ige, na may gastos rin yung paglilipat sa flexible learning. Pagkat namimili nga ng online materials, itataas rin yung internet requirement at ganun din yung uh, aircon at iba pang kapal. Our consumption. Yun ang problema doon. Hindi talaga maintindihan kung bakit may mga fees for laboratory, library, medical, dental, eh hindi nga makapunta sa eskwelahan yung mga bata. So yun yata ang kinakailangan ipaliwanag ng maigi ng mga eskwelahan at uh, siguro hindi naman nila isasamas ng load sa akin na talagang nga may mga reklamo na na-publicize na tungkol sa University of the East, UST, pati De La Salle. Yun ang uh, natanggap natin sa opisina at sa iba't iba pang mga sulat ng tao. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Aimee. No? Uh, just to put on record that uh, your, your, your bill uh, has not been referred to this uh, committee and but once it uh, it's referred, we We'll tackle it uh, right away. And again, uh, thank you. Before we hear uh, the uh, representative from uh, the faculty uh, sector, we'd like to hear from Senator Pia Cayetano, one of the uh, champions of uh, education in the Senate. Uh, Ati Pia, you, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a number of uh, comments no, and reactions to statements made by various uh, um, uh, resource persons no, over the past two hours. Um, but let me start with uh, support also for the uh, resolution filed by Senator Aini. Um, but I'd also like to put some perspective there because I think it's only fair, uh, like Chair Popoy said, no, that uh, his constant uh, reminders to the universities and colleges to explain well to the parents because there are recurring costs that regardless kung may pasok o hindi, babayaran pa rin, di ba? Now, is it fair to pass it on to the students? Well, those are things that have to be discussed. So, for example, yung... Kaya nyo nga pinasok yung anak nyo doon dahil ah, maganda ang laboratory noon, ano, kompleto ang gamit. Binayaran yun. Uh, gumastos ng kung anumang halaga to invest in those kind of equipment. And they have to still be paying that. Siguro na-amortize nilang ang uh, gastos doon. But these are things that have to be explained so that people understand that there are costs that recur and uh, it needs to be paid. Yun lang naman ang, ang sakin, similar to what uh, Chair Popoy said, na mapaliwanag ng maayos. And... Kung hindi naman pwede, kung kaya namang hindi um, 
singilin, then mo mo ng singilin. But I understand, no? these are costs that have to be paid. Um, let me now comment on the um, uh, digital uh, co connectivity. I also support the uh, the um, concern that was raised about uh, connectivity for the private sector. Uh, let's see what we can do about that uh, immediately because uh, we recognize that they are uh, integral partners in the delivery of uh, higher education to our uh, youth. So that really must be something that we work on. So I will work with the team, um, especially the chair, on uh, uh, trying to address this. And then, Mr. Chair, um, I'd also like to comment on uh, the need to address the wellness and uh, mental health of the students. Uh, His Honor uh, specifically asked, what is the effect of blended learning on the mental health of the students? Um, I think it would be uh, not very accurate um, if the response is simply because of the blended learning, no? because I think any mental health reaction or uh, um, condition that is being experienced by anyone, even whether they're students, adults, teachers, is not really a reaction just to the blended learning, but to the whole pandemic, to the entire experience. I don't think we have enough data to simply pinpoint that ah, ang reaction ito is because of blended learning. Pero ito naman, uh, at, at specifically because wala siyang connectivity. I think it's a whole, it's a, it's a, it's a whole um, uh, reaction to everything we go to and perhaps um, intensified by the lack of connectivity, di ba? We all experience that, that's for sure. Parang okay na yung araw mo eh, tapos biglang wala ka na palang kausap like uh, Senator Dick the other day, no? Ang ganda-ganda nung kanyang uh, uh, sponsorship tapos uh, lahat tayo hindi na natin narinig kasi naputol na siya. So, so, yun lang Twice naman yun. Twice nangyari. So, um, kaya tinitingnan kita ng maayos dahil baka nagsasalita ka, Chair, hindi, hindi ka na namin narinig. <laughs> so, my whole point lang naman is to recognize that it is not just one thing that affects us. It's so many things. And and um, um, almost almost as important as uh, food and water and uh, um, shelter, di ba dati, sabi, ano ba yung mga basic needs? Food, shelter, water, clothing. And na ngayon, connectivity rin is one of those essentials. Um, so it's very important. But on that note, no, given that we do not have, the, the schools no, do not have, are, have not been set up to really deliver this, this uh, wellness and mental health support that is needed. No? So again, COVID, always, COVID and, and other, other um, crises present us with those opportunities to do something about it. Kung hindi pa nangyari to, hindi pa talaga tayo mag all out on connectivity, hindi pa tayo mag all out on mental mental wellness. So, ang akin pong suggestion, since it will take time, it is not overnight na bigla tayong magigising connected na lahat, may we request um, CHED to consider um, either it's a highly recommending or maybe we can, we can um, I, I can draft a bill, I don't know. It, it's a, we don't need a law for it, but to come up with um, programs, whether they are pre-taped um, sessions by experts on wellness, uh, peer groups that provide Q&As that are printed, maraming ways din na i-deliver itong support na ito, itong awareness on mental health. Again, not through digital means. Para nakaka-reach out pa rin tayo dun sa mga studyanting nangangailangan at maraming nangangailangan. So may we also bring that to the attention of all the uh, decision makers here, whether it's from the private sector and from the public sector, na mag-create kayo ng materials to address uh, the concerns of the students and the parents on mental awareness, di ba? It doesn't have to be de de delivered one-on-one. -on -one. Dahil hindi talaga tayo prepared for that. A lot of the universities don't have that. Um, the next point I'd like to raise, uh, Mr. Chair, is on the... Um, on the face-to-face -face learning um, because it's been mentioned many times. I don't think there's a bill pending in this committee right now, but it has been mentioned a number of times. I actually have a view that is shared by a lot of professionals that we must continue to explore the possibility of minimal face-to-face -face on a staggered basis in a very... Um, scientifically determined way, uh, in, uh, which, which has been included in our uh, comments to the President's report, um, to allow um, certain universities and colleges who, on their own, 
will present themselves as prepared and the specific programs that would allow it um, to allow students to advance. So I'm talking about, Mr. Chair, in far-flung areas, and I have been there because of my my uh, personal passion to go hiking, biking, etc. I've been to areas na very isolated, and the chances of COVID there are very low. These are areas where we should exploit. Now, I am not calling for bumalik kayo sa school, 30 students in a classroom. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being creative and considering what kind of practicum, what kind of lessons can be taught in uh, with physical distancing with three students, with five students in a classroom that can be done. And we cannot shut our mind to not exploring that. No, we, we continually have to explore these possibilities because it's being explored all over the world. So I'm not here to give a go signal na gawin nyo na yan. No, but I'm saying it is incumbent upon all decision makers to keep on exploring and considering those possibilities. Otherwise, mahuhuli po tayo. Um, I'm not aware of, uh, I'm not aware of um, any, any, any uh, responsible uh, um, university or college administration who would do something recklessly, di ba? Ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is to open your mind and consider what are those possibilities. For example, kung hindi pa tayo nag um, um, M, ano ba tayo ngayon? MGCQ sa, sa NCR, uh, there was already a go signal given to professional basketball para mag-training sila. So ang intindi ko, because my, my um, brother-in-law is a professional player, um, they will not be playing together, but they will be training in a whole uh, basketball court, one on one end, one on another, and there's a coach. Eh kung pwedeng gawin ng basketball player yun, bakit hindi pwedeng gawin ng estudyante na responsable at ng teacher yun, di ba? Yun lang naman yung sa akin. So I'm just saying explore. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Pia, before we hear our representative for the first time, uh, faculty, uh, do you want to uh, make a quick comment, uh, uh, Chairman Popoy? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, just uh, three points. Uh, Please proceed. Yeah, I, I agree with Senator Cayetano that when we say flexible learning, it should not mean that there will be absolutely no residential now, soon, and in the future, because there are merits also to face-to-face -to -face interaction and learning. Because if it is true that online was superior to face-to-face -to -face all this time, then we should have seen this shift much earlier. Uh, meron ding nawawala talaga sa face-to-face -face, may mga hindi ka magawa online like medical programs for example, engineering programs there are limits to what you can do for laboratory, for internship you cannot make all of this uh, online so what we are doing in the CHED is yung guidelines uh, that we already basically finished with the guidelines and I said earlier we will now go on the ground and see how universities that are interested to do some face-to-face, -face, how they will reconfigure physically their classrooms, their dormitories, etc., and learn from how other countries are doing it, uh, ventilation, in and out, etc., uh, so that we can slowly develop a prototype that other universities can, uh, can use later on. Uh, so this is uh, a continuing process that uh, we are doing. No? Uh, there are actually some universities that have already sent a request to CHED. For example, De La Salle Benil has sent a proposal. Sabi nila, pwede ba kami mag-face-to-face -face? ang gagawin namin? Lahat ng mga estudyante na napapasok, merong mandatory testing, pag nag-negative sila, Nandu doon sila sa aming hotel for one whole semester. And then we will hold classes only for them. So there are universities that are exploring options that will make it safer. And so we are studying that proposal of, uh, of De La Salle Benil. Kasi yung unang ginawa nila, 20 degree programs lahat online. But they realized that there are programs that you cannot do fully online. So sabi nila, can we propose to the IATF, test namin sila, sigurado silang negative, their health is secured, we will let them stay in the hotel, 
and uh, we will deliver portions of the program face to face. So that our top universities are uh, doing their best. I think President Caroline Enriquez uh, in their medical programs is exploring how you can use both online and offline for for the clinical part, uh, for the for the for the practical part, etc. Uh, so we are learning. Uh, uh, what we are happy about is that our top universities are learning and trying to see what can be done. And we we bank on their leadership to guide the other less prepared universities on flexible learning to uh, to do it. Uh, so I, I, I agree. Uh, uh, our target some limited face-to-face will probably be the second semester of this school year. Uh, on, of course, we're assuming that the health situation will improve, the guidelines and prototypes will be available, and then slowly we can see uh, how much face-to-face -face, uh, will be allowed uh, uh, in our universities moving forward. Uh, Okay, I think... Uh, Sinong nawala, Mr. Chair? Na nawala yata. Saan nawala, si hindi tayo. <laughs> um, Mr. Chair, yung... Yung kwan lang, yung do sa... Me okay. Yung sa... Nakamute ako eh. Please unmute me. Okay, Mr. Chairman Popoy, please proceed. No, the... I think the Senate has uh, muted me, so I cannot be heard. There, Okay. Yun lang sa mental health, uh, what the commission has done is we have touch base with the association of the yung psychologists, psychiatrists to explore how this can be done. Uh, this, is a new, this is a new arena that uh, there are very few, very few experts on this. And uh, we are, uh, we are uh, opening a funding possibility for the association of the uh, psychiatrists, psychologists to work with the commission and the universities to deal with mental health issues. Pero uh, initial consultation pa lang ang nangyayari. Wala pang uh, actual programs that have been identified. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Popoy, uh, we give the floor now. Kanina pa natin na gustong marinig no? ang Council of Teachers and Staff in Colleges and universities in the Philippines. Uh, isa sa mga lead convener po natin mula sa isa sa pinakamaganda, kung hindi man pinakamagandang universidad sa balat ng lupa, ang University of Santo Tomas. Convener, Professor Rene Tadle. <laughs> Sir, you are recognized. Thank you for being with us. Oy, maraming, maraming salawat. Salamat, uh, Senator Joel, and for the rest also of the senators. Uh, I actually prepared uh, a PowerPoint presentation which I gave to to uh, to the staff. Uh, could that be presented? Just just proceed uh, with your uh, statement, uh, Sir Rene. Oh, oh uh, kasi, all right. Uh, ah, meron na ba? Wala. Right. Okay. Uh, I think first, salamat kasi for the first time, binigyan ng, ng opportunity ang mga teachers and non-academic personnel uh, to speak about matters that are very, very important to them and also affect their terms and condition of employment. In any case, my, my, my discussion will be divided into two parts. Uh, yung uh, una regarding the online and then uh, also later yung labor issue. Uh, I hope I can be heard. Na, an, ayan, okay. Can hear uh, you. We next, can hear you. Uh, next, yes, okay, okay, salamat. Next Let's slide, please. Be, uh, brief, uh, Sir Rene, no? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Can you yes, be brief lang? sir. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I'll try my very, my, very this will be uh, quick, hopefully. Uh, these are some of the experience, so that's why there is a mental health related issues there. Eh. Number one, uh, Many times, ang experience ng faculty members would be this. Tatawagan sila sa telepono, may online sila, but at the same time, it becomes on-call. 
they would even receive calls from parents, uh, administrators at 10 o'clock in the evening. And so there are there's, there's supposed to be policies on that. Pangalawa, uh, Big Brother's presence in an online class. What does that mean? They just realized that sometimes when, when they present their lesson, yung mga, uh, yung, may mga ibang audience dun sa kanilang, sa kanilang uh, estudyante na kasama. At kumisa naririnig pa nila na uh, nagko-coach yung, yung parent or who, who, yung tutor kung anong dapat tanungin o anong dapat gawin ng teacher. Uh, also, yung pagpo-post ng lecture online, kasi this is very good because some, uh, we were instructed, teachers were instructed to post this, this, ano, this uh, uh, lectures uh, so that yung mga, fac yung mga sudyante na hindi maaaring maka... maka absent during the online class can later uh, have access to the lecture but ang problem dito sometimes is this is posted also in the in the internet and so it is worrisome for faculty members tapos also in number of preparations parang napakadami at point uh, at there are times for subjects multi level and also yung issue na uh, Kung minsan, yung English teacher, yung math teacher magtuturo ng English. Okay, next slide. So, because of that, may mga anxiety issues that are that that would come into, into play. May I request the, the another for the next slide? Okay, I think this is very, very important because this is the most recent study by Tome and Nelson. Lumalabas dito sa... Ito po yung, ano ba yung maximum number of enrollees on online class? This is a 2019 uh, published article. And this was a study that is also, uh, you know, across different disciplines. So ang sinasabi sa undergraduate, pag, pag traditional 18, sa online 13. Well, yung sa hybrid 17, but my point is this, no? Uh, we are very, very far from this because at existing right now, ang, uh, based on the rules, ang ating uh, uh, ceiling sa number of students per class, let's say lecture class, is around 50. But the ideal uh, number is 13 for online, 18 for traditional. We are not saying that we should go to this, but this should be our direction. In any case, it's also important that, uh, you know, ang minention namin to rito because... We want to prevent a situation where an administrator will say that, okay, online naman, you can afford 60 students in, in your class. I think that should be avoided. In fact, we should lower it as much as we can. Uh, next slide. Now, all right. Monthly load internet allowance, borrowing mechanism for laptops, loan for the purchase of PC laptops. All right. Here, uh, there are schools in the private sector that actually na ginagawa ito. But I would say that they are very, very rare species. Konti lang. So I think there is really a need to examine how they use their mis miscellaneous or other fees. I agree with the, with the proposal earlier that this, this committee or another committee should focus on really examining or even check, examining how the existing uh, uh, Miscellaneous and other fees are being used. Uh, also, pagdating naman sa loan for the purchase of PCs or laptops, napansin namin maganda rin ito, pero may mga eskwelahan na nagbibigay ng loan pero binibigyan pa ng interests. Uh, where in fact, eh, ito naman ay gagamitin sa mga estudyante. So siguro dapat uh, iwasan yung mga ganung bagay. Next slide. All right. Uh, there's also an issue of academic freedom. Who determines the number of hours for synchronic and non-synchronic teaching? I, I think malino yan. Our position is it should be the teacher because he knows what is the condition inside the classroom, whether it be uh, actual or online. Next. Next, please. Uh, also, performance appraisals, uh, performance appraisals of teachers. Uh, okay. I think the performance appraisal should really reflect now a different a different condition. Uh, it's the online or condition or blended condition of teaching. Eh, ang importante dito, dapat, when they are doing this, dapat kasama yung mga teachers sa paggawa or ng, 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 ng evaluation or, ja, or uh, competency appraisals. Next. Next, please. All right. 
property oh, uh, please let's go back a little all right there is an also an issue of property rights issues vis-a-vis -vis teachers prepared modules there is a school that negotiates with teachers to create modules. Okay, that's fine. I'll give you 50000 uh, outside your salary, but you have to prepare modules. Next, there is also a school that collects module fee. Part of the, of the fee is paid to teachers. I collect 600 uh, I'll give you 100 for every student. Now, how appropriate that is, that's, that's a question that I think we have to consider more seriously. A third, school considers module making as part of teacher's responsibility, so no additional pay. So, kawawa naman, no? Uh, dapat makita to ng CHED. Now, ang tanong ganito. Okay, if the module will be used inside the classroom of the teacher or the students in the department of the same school, maybe that's okay. But what if these modules will be used in another branch of the school? What if this module will also be uh, sold to a third party or, or whatever? So I, I think these are the policies that we have even requested a long time ago uh, to, that had, this, ha, this, has to be, this has to be addressed. All right, next, next item. Next slide. Okay, occupational health and safety. So there is an issue there of monitoring, transportation, source of funds. Ang, ang sinasabi lang natin dito, I think this occupational health and safety, uh, there must be... Uh, CHED, DepEd, TESDA, and DOLE should come up with a policy uh, that would define this in, in this COVID-19 in, in connection with the schools. Why? Because uh, sometimes it has, it has an effect on other laws or even the manual of regulations of private schools. So dapat hindi hiwa-hiwalay yung, yung paggagawa ng polisiya. They should gather together and talk to the to talk to the teachers, to the students, to the parents, and not only, not only to the owners of schools or to the presidents or administrators of schools. So, gawin nating tripartite or multipartite so that alam talaga na nakaakma yung mga polisiya at mga guidelines na gagawin. I think that's where uh, things are rather, rather uh, lacking. Okay, next, next, next uh, slide. Now, and this is what I'm saying, employees' participation in policy making. So participation of employee representatives from the faculty and staff or unions, associations, in the case of organized establishment, in drafting policies affecting employees, including but not limited to the impact of COVID-19. Use the grievance, the grievance machinery in dealing with issues and policies arising from employment relations as provided in Section 124 of CHED Manual of Regulations for Private Education. Ito ang hindi nagagamit. Kasi ang sinasabi kung minsan, o pumunta na lang kayo sa dole. Kung may problema kayo sa retrenchment, kung may problema kayo sa, sa wage cuts, go to dole. Where in fact, CHED can, uh, as a preventive measure, can really inculcate the use of grievance machinery within the school so that the teachers, the non-academic personnel, and the administrators can, can really talk about some of these issues, rather than for teachers to go out. You know, teachers cannot afford a lawyer. It's more difficult for them. I mean, we know this very well. The parity is not the same between teachers and academic personnel and the owners of schools. Uh, we support the creation of tertiary online educations and their, uh, the distance learning office. Uh, but strongly suggest that it should be tripartite. Uh, I, I guess the Senate, the good Senator Villanueva is quite, quite no, knows this very well because, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he was a former TESA Director General, and so he knows tripartism. Maybe we have to do this also even in the Commission on Higher Education or even in this particular office. Next. Next slide. Okay. Now, let's go to the labor relation issues. We believe that exhaustions of all remedies and measures, including allocation of accumulated assets to sustain operation, uh, there must be, it must be exhausted first before any actual retrenchments or reduction of wages and benefits. Okay? We believe also, I think we support, the support of, uh, if there is a law that will support the private schools, that will be great. But let us make sure. Let us make sure that uh, the the support of government to them is conditional to the, to the capacity of the schools to retain their teachers and non-academic 
uh, personal in terms of employment. They have to, to keep the jobs. Uh, pwede yung pakibalik sandali dun sa next, ano. Madali na po ito. Uh, next slide. Uh, the previous slide, please. Sorry, sir. Please wind up. Uh, uh, a lot of okay. Thank you. Okay. Tapos itong sa, okay, clarification of net losses. Kasi palaging sinasabi na may, may, may talo ang, ang mga eskwilahan may, because of the pandemic. Totoo naman yon. Pero what I'm saying is this. Universities and colleges, okay, have attained curves of liquidity profitability and stability through years of existence, okay? Uh, it's difficult to understand why, let's say, a, a century-old uh, school can no longer pay some of their workers, okay? In other words, hindi lang dapat tingnan yung losses, but the financial uh, condition of the school. So, loss can be mitigated by resumption of revenue streams due to mandatory continuity of academic operations. Next. I think two last slides. Uh, loss is deemed temporary and recoverable. So what is important is documentary evidence. Uh, ito ang dapat makita. A uh, government should not just say, okay, natatalo kami. Hey, what are the evidence? Ano yung financial statement and other things? We have a paper that we are going to submit to this, uh, to this committee uh, to define more fully what are those requirements that we would want government to consider every time there's a problem of retrenchment or wage cuts or whatever. Then, consider the financial resources capacity of institutions sustained over the years. As I have said, may mga matatagal ng institusyon, pero pagdating ng, ng crisis, biglang ang unang tinatanggal ay yung mga, mga, mga faculty members and academic personnel. Ang nakakaawa dito, dahil uh, sila yung mga front lines ngayon. And these schools have survived for so long. Survived for so long. I think losses should not be viewed, parang yun lang ang basis eh. But there should be more. But it's the financial condition itself that can be studied thoroughly. Uh, last slide. Last slide, please. So, uh, ito lang, sa, I, ang gusto lang po namin sabihin, ano, dapat walang iwanan, walang laglagan. We just have to, we, ha, we are in the same boat. And you cannot just say, okay, faculty members let go or, uh, you know, non-academic person let go. Uh, kailangan magtulungan. So, and another thing, I think in all the discussion for the last three or four months, uh, we can hear a lot of voices coming from the, non, the, the owners of schools, uh, you know, but we ne you never heard so much about teachers. I, I guess this is the, only, the first time. And I think, may I request the Commission on Higher Education and the other government agencies to, to really, uh, every time there is a public hearing on guidelines, whatever, uh, you, you should always call teachers because we have also a different perspective. Without that, I, I don't think, uh, parang, hindi, parang hindi, iniiwanan kami at yung ating mga non-academic personnel. So, uh, thank you for listening. I think uh, that's all what I like to, we would like to say. Uy. much, uh, Sir Rene uh, Tadley. We'll... we'll, we'll... Uh, keep that in mind and uh, remind uh, everyone also here in this uh, uh, committee hearing that uh, you can uh, submit your position pa paper and uh, we will uh, see to it that your voices uh, uh, will be heard and we don't we do not intend to break the uh, uh, record uh, breaking uh, hearing yesterday sampung uh, oras mahigit no and I'm sure a lot of us did not uh, have breakfast or lunch, but uh, we'll give the floor lang to DOF. We have not heard from uh, DOF. Uh, perhaps if I can just uh, uh, raise uh, this question to the Department of uh, Finance, if he's still there. Attorney, Attorney Nina, you're there. Yes, yes sir. Good afternoon, your honors. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just ask you one question. At present po, how many uh, educational institutions have expressed the intent of applying to uh, land, bank, uh, land banks yung program na academe? How many of uh, these are uh, higher education and technical uh, vocational institutions? Do you have uh, any data? Sure, right now, sir, um, aside from the ones that have... Um 
uh, shown their intention not to um, apply. I understand that there are already applicants, but um, as to the numbers, we will be submitting to the committee um, the exact uh, data on this, sir. Sir, if I may, on the other bills. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, but but before that, please. Uh, uh, yeah, sir. And, and just to, to 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 put on record, no, meron tayong three billion uh, available. Uh, fund na ready po para maipahiram sa ating uh, mga educational institution is that correct and uh, uh, with with that may i also ask if 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 you have plans of augmenting the budget for this program okay um uh okay uh in the beginning of July, sir um the secretary of finance announced through a uh, pre on a speech that um, the land bank will be providing loans for private non ed junior senior high schools, um, private uh, technical vocational and education training institutions, and private high, higher education institutions, um, a loan program, wherein uh, basically they will, the land bank will be refinancing or rediscounting promissory notes issued by parents are benefactors of students um, of the said institutions. So the, as mentioned earlier, the program fund is at 3 billion po, um, and the availability is until uh, June 30, 2021, of course, until the funds are depleted. Um, okay, so basically the interest rate... Ask, we'll also yes, ask kung ano yung... Uh, uh, status no, nung 3 billion, no, how much yung nabawas na, and uh, if there's also additional uh, 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 funding. request uh, for funding. Thank you. Sir, we will provide all of those to the committee na lang po. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, on the other bill, sir, uh, your Honor, um, before we give our comments, we would first like to laud the committee on their efforts to look into the readiness of educational institutions and making sure that every student shall have access to education and that no young Filipino is left behind. So ensuring this is in line with the aims of the Comprehensive Tax Reform Program of the Economic Team of uplifting everyone from poverty with, with uh, education playing a very important role in achieving this. So on SB 1538, uh, we would defer to the comments of Ched Testa and the educational institutions themselves now when it comes to the loan moratorium. But um, on the short term, sir, um, part of the recovery package that is supported by the DOF are a number of um, measures to support education. So primarily, this is the Bayanihan 2, um, which the Senate has already passed. Um, and is um, aimed to be passed po, no, by the House of Representatives, hopefully this afternoon. Um, we have a number of provisions there that um, assist education or support education. No? So for students, um, we have uh, the provision amending uh, RA 10931 on the universal access to quality tertiary education. Um, we have support also for um the transition no, of educational institutions to alternative learning system. Um, aside from that, um, to address digital connectivity, uh, the DICT is to be given funding po, no, for, uh, to basically um, improve on our internet speed and stability for purposes of uh, e-learning. Um, there is additional wage subsidies po, of $17 billion, um, Basically, sir, the Senate version has uh, this provision po no, na displaced uh, ano lang po, workers um, in the uh, our educational institutions uncovered. Pero po, um, the DOF supports sana that uh, this provision include all, not just siguro po pati po the ones that are, um, yun nga po yung as mentioned earlier, uh, under floating status, no, not just po the displaced uh, teachers. So um, we also have, of course, the test the funding uh, and in po, support uh, to SUCs uh, for the development of smart campuses. So all of these provisions in the Bayanihan 2, which the DOF um, really supports and uh, is as in po, actually po, the whole uh, executive uh, economic team are in Congress right now to basically fight for these provisions. So, um, yun po. So, 
Uh, just, just one more thing that I'd like to uh, to uh, mention. Because with regard to the loan and the programs of the government, we have been very specific yes, about this. For example, if this loan uh, tied to any condition, and that's what we have been pushing, you know, conditions such as the HEI retaining a certain portion of its uh, workforce. Uh, kailangan, kung uh, maka-access sila ng program, subsidies from the government, they have to make sure na hindi sila magtatanggal ng uh, kanilang mga faculty or mga teaching assistants or uh, uh, staff from their from that institution. Uh, yun po, nakalagay pa rin yun no, sa ating mga, as, as, as part of our, uh, our uh, program, uh, ma'am. Yes, sir. As to, I think we could, uh, if, if ever there are provisions po in the Bayanihan too that uh, we can improve further po and put condi these conditions no, that ensures na, um, of course, hindi lang pala students uh, that shouldn't be left behind, the teachers as well. Yun po. So, um, ano, this could be, uh, this could be additions po and the DOF will support those. Of course, ano po eh, um, the funds for recovery aren't unlimited, no? Uh, are, are not unlimited, basically, talaga. So, um, this should be very targeted. And uh, those that uh, really need it should get it. And one of the industries po talaga that are strung struggling right now is the education industry. Um, my daughter started schooling today. And um, online, purely online. Um, and uh, I understand that her school has to let go some of their teachers, which is very sad. And the students as well feel it. So um, uh, the DOF um, is sure to really support and uh, okay po kami with uh, putting conditions on loan programs, subsidies as well for these education institutions. Uh, Director Nina, and uh, uh, thank you for that clarification because Every time we talk about government subsidies in the Senate, uh, this representation would always see to it that every time we give subsidies, whether to the education sector, to the uh, small business, uh, uh, even MSMEs, we wanted to put that caveat that uh, there's a condition na hindi nila dapat uh, uh, i-retrench o tanggalin ang sino man na nandoon sa kanilang uh, uh, business entity kaya nga tumutulong ang gobyerno to to make sure na matulungan din yung ating uh, mga manggagawa. Thank you ma'am. Uh, I'll go with the test the uh, DG Rose you're still there. I'm sorry. The senator. DG. Yes, uh, we we wanted to find out the uh, DDG uh, Rose how is test the uh, helping the tech book uh, schools to transition to a uh, flexible uh, learning. I'm I'm sure this is very uh, challenging. No, um, I've been in Tesla for quite some time, and we always talk about competency-based programs and uh, especially the assessment. Um, we cannot just uh, uh, assess in uh, on, on, online assessment uh, easily. No, so. I wanted to find out from uh, from from Tesla kung, uh, uh, how are we going to do this and uh, if there's anything we can do here in the Senate to, to help out. The DG Rose, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, before anything else, but during the pandemic, we came up with a survey of the different TVIs in all of the regions. But, and then there have been questions in that particular survey like, does your institution have the capacity to continue operation, the conduct of training programs given the pandemic situation? 63% of those surveys surveyed said yes, and 37 of those uh, surveyed said no. So ito po yung nakakaawa kasi most, if not all of them, na nagsay ng no are these small institutions. And you know naman, sec, na yung small institutions na to are usually those from the different provinces in Visayas and Mindanao. So ang second po na tanong is what modalities of training will your institution adopt? So ang sinabi po nila is that yung blended learning ang gusto nila, 78%, which means na ang sinasabi po nila na blended learning is that online plus face-to-face. -face. 
So yung iba po, distance learning also, which means to say the use of radio and TV na mga uh, programs so they could also make use of this as a medium of instruction. 15% um, only said that they can do pure online. So um, we all know that learning management system is somehow very expensive. So what we did po is for us to open the TOP as their central platform or the test the online program as their central platform po for learning as a learning management system. Um, and then um, may mga sinabi pa po kami na ay, mga tinanong pa po kami na uh, ano pa po ang kailangan nyo? And they said that they need their trainers to be trained. So we trained already 3,000 learning facilitators to do blended or the flexible learning. In fact, in, in, uh, ayoko pong talawagin na online lang talaga. It's flexible learning system. So we have already came up with 3,000 of these learning facilitators. And then um, we will train them also po because mahal nga po ang learning management system. So um, in third week of August, we have lined up a program on the development of learning materials to be used in the flexible delivery po. So that would be online uh, uh, distance learning. So we'll, we'll come ag up again with a cadre of people or the regional lead trainers na tinatawag natin sa TESDA and we will train them for us to, to re-echo as a multiplier effect po sa mga uh, regions. Ang kailangan po namin sa Senate is tulong talaga in order for us, number one, is to create mga campuses din. Kasi minsan, um, hindi po na, na may mention ang TESDA. When we talk about education agencies, minsan ang parati pong mention is DepEd only and CHED. Eh, parati po kami nasa gitna. So, um, parating hindi minsan alam ng tao. Akala ata nila ang TESDA is only a training center. So, we would like to say that TESDA is also a part of the education system. And kumbaga sa, ano nga, kumbaga sa huli, ano to, Trinity, um, sinasabi na sa ngala ng Ama, sa Diyos, at Spiritu Santo, yung TESDA daw po, Spiritu Santo. So, that's basically what we need. Ibig sabihin, sex. mahirap intindihin din. Mahirap intindihin. <laughs> na, hindi, nararam, nandun, nararamdaman mo kahit hindi mo nakikita. So, that, yun po, yun yung mga ginagawa natin sa TESDA SEC and yung, yung ayuda nga in terms of yung pag-create ng mga, ng mga uh, campuses that can really be friendly dun sa, ano, sa mga flexible delivery system. And then, yung pag -aloc hindi allocate uh, can we just also ask you to come up with something in which we could really use uh, TV as well as radio frequencies for us to really popularize or propagate yung mga distance learning modes. Yun lang po, Sen. Salamat po. Thank you, Dardy DG Rose, but uh, I would like to put on record, and I think records will, will bear me out every time we talk about the education sector in any forum, uh, especially in the Senate, this representation would always uh, point out the importance of technical education and skills development uh, sector. In fact, uh, uh, every time uh, we talk about the budget, and I, will, I, I have to say this, uh, DG Rose, when uh, the uh, executive and the Department of Budget and Management ask for the, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the stopping of uh, or halting the implementation of Tulong Trabaho Act, I was the last person to know about it. In fact, I just heard someone from TESDA being interviewed na give up na nila yung additional funding that I work hard for. Imagine, we pass this measure, Tulong Trabaho Act, hindi pinonduhan ng pamahalaan, tayo yung naghanap ng pondo, pagkatapos tinanggal ng hindi ko alam. Now we have Bayanihan to, you know, not only I, I, I work hard for the uh, additional 3 billion pesos for our SUCs, 
I also work hard for additional 1 billion pesos for TESDA in Bayan Records uh, will, will support uh, this representation statement. I just hope that we'll be able to use it uh, properly, you know, uh, the DG Rose. Now, uh, yes, another thing that I'd like I'd like to, to, to mention is the challenge that we have right now in, in, in relation to uh, assessment, in conducting uh, assessment, the DG Rose. Um, paano po ba ito? What, what, what are we going to do? And uh, siguro yung last point that I'd like to raise is uh, at the end of the day, uh, magkakaroon ba ng adjustment to our target with regard to uh, TESDA's uh, uh, target graduates this year? Um, uh, yes, and uh, we couldn't thank you enough for all the help. Even if you're not with us anymore, you're still the test the man. Maraming salamat po doon. Um, in terms po of the target, we came up with a um, yung mid-year assessment uh, last national directorate, which was last March. So yung iba po na ano, we came up with a catch-up plan as well as lowering of targets na talagang hindi na po kaya because of the absorptive capacity of test the institutions as well as TDIs. In the assessment naman po, it is really, this particular thing is really very challenging for TESDA primarily because lalo na ngayon sa NCR which is also bringing the highest number of uh, accomplishment in terms po of assessment, hindi talaga pwede mag face-to-face -face, uh, on, on, ano, alam nyo naman po yung nangyayari talaga sa assessment na challenge the whole Tibet sector is really challenged on this one eh. Kasi yung Tibet, buti na lang po, competency-based tayo, so it's easier for us to really transform yung, yung methodology natin to another methodol, uh, ito na, to another mode. Except that yung talagang um, assessment, yun po ang mahirap. However, we came up already sec ascend with strategies. Number one is that all those that have been awarded APAC at Saka Star Awards, uh, pwede na po ni namin i-recognize na yung mismong school uh, can do already institutional assessment and we could recognize it uh, already as an, ass uh, as an assessment for national recognition or national certification. That's one po. Number two is that we are now trying to touch base with the industry partners for us to be able to come up with industry certifications. And then the third is, of course, portfolio assessment for selected um, programs po, which means to say that if they have the recognition of prior learning, if they can provide us with documentation and um, na portfolio na meron sila, so we could recognize prior assessment through portfolio assessment, um, plus some videotapes of what they have done. So yun po, sec yung ginagawa namin, but surely, alam na alam mo yan, it's really very challenging. Okay, I, 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 I fully agree dun sa institutional assessment, no? yung may APAC, yung may STAR, um, okay po yun. Uh, the G, but with the Students. For example, if you're a barista, you wanted to be assessed. Siyempre, hindi pwedeng hindi face-to-face. -face. Kasi if you're online, you wouldn't know if someone is uh, whispering or asking you what to do. Uh, medyo mahirap and challenging itong uh, assessment na, na kailangan gawin. Sa ating mga estudyante, I mean, how, how can you certify a student if... Uh, if you cannot conduct yung pinaka bread and butter ng TESDA, which is the assessment? Um, yes, sir. That's why we're trying to really um, intensify the, the portfolio assessment. So, bari, videotapes na lang yung hihingin namin if they, if they can really uh, exhibit the competencies which is required. Talagang, uh, at this point, full trust na lang talaga po eh na we will uh, really come up with a more uh, intensified and aggressive, robust system in portfolio assessment. Pardon the DG dun's full trust. Of course, uh, we, we give the benefit of the doubt, no. But uh, it's very hard kung merong siyang kasama, 
and it might affect the uh, the uh, integrity of our uh, national certificates. Uh, I think we have to look into that. No, uh, I, I I trust that Tesla will uh, will 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 do its part to make sure na hindi magkaroon ng blemish yung uh, o mag hindi matint yung ating uh, integrity uh, yes, in, sir. Issue, in the issuance of our national certificate program. Yes, and uh, surely we will do that because it's an ISO certified, um, alam mo naman, enrolled siya sa ISO, so we cannot just try to do something na hindi po papasa sa standards ng ISO. Yes, thank you, uh, DDG Rose. Is there anything would, uh, you'd like to add? Um, kanina may nagtaas ng kamay and, and now I'm, I'm having a hard time looking at my computer. Naglalag pa rin siya. Is there anyone who wanted to, to, to say something before we, we close? Okay na? Senator? Yes, uh, President Arcega, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, as we come to the end, uh, we thank the committee for giving us the opportunity to understand the issue of online learning coming from different perspective. If there's something that uh, we've learned, I guess, in this exercise, uh, um, Mr. Senator, of course, to understand uh, also the interests of the other sector. Earlier, when I was listening to the faculty representative to the session, I know you're, you're, where you're coming. No? Uh, in fact, um, most of your um, proposal, of course, would serve the best interest of the faculty. But on the other hand, no, I would like to understand, like for example, the class size, no? that uh, through research been proposing that uh, from 19 it be about 13 or. 19 no, will have implication to the financial position of the private management. No? Also, in the same manner, uh, we've been asking that uh, you know we give support to uh, we assist the faculty members in their laptops you know, and loads. Uh, again, it would depend upon the the financial position of uh, uh, of the private institutions. No? And uh, also on synchronous and asynchronous, um, I'm okay that. Uh, we consult the teachers, no? But I guess it should be a shared responsibility between the management and the faculty, no? How many hours should be spent for synchronous and asynchronous? And of course, for property rights, no? I'm happy, no? I've learned a lot from your presentation. This is my first time to see a faculty rep, no? Uh, to air out the sentiments. And uh, I'm coming also as a teacher and also as a management, as also an association uh, president, no? Uh, you're asking about what should be the property, who should own the module being used no, within the campus. No? Naisip ko tuloy yung isang teacher sa public school na uh, gumawa siya ng module pero pinamimigay niya dun sa mga estudyante. No? I guess uh, pwede rin natin tingnan na ngayon uh, habang pinag-uusapan natin sino ang may magmamayari at ano ang dapat makuha natin, maganda siguro makita natin din sa kabuuan ang pwede natin ibigay, no? sa ating mga kabataan, no? uh, less of commercialization ba or less of any professional fee. No? And of course, uh, maganda ho, kaya lang yun niya, uh, bilang pagtatapos, uh, there's one thing clear. No? The problem is not just among the sectors. No? There is this COVID-19 that came into our lives unexpected. And uh, as much as we want to ask the government no, to give full support as mentioned by uh, Tesla, uh, of our uh, visitor from DOF, no, our resources it is not unlimited, no. So at some point, uh, there is no other way to survive this pandemic but to be kind and to be, you know, to, to be more understanding of uh, of the interests, uh, which may be a unifying element or a differentiating factor uh, between and among. Mahirap talagang magtanggal ng teachers, no? Mahirap magtanggal ng empleyado. Pero kung talagang wala ka ng option, the next for you to ask would be the government. 
but the government at some point also have its own limitation to provide. So every time that we have the MGCQ, pinakabahan ng lahat, hindi lang yung mga empleyado, pati yung mga may-ari ng iba't ibang kumpanya. So from the Alco and Alcocoa, uh, our position of course would be to uh, have this bill and active, no? which will serve the interest of everyone affected by this COVID-19 pandemic. Let's continue to be agile and resilient, but more than anything else, let's continue to, to, to be understanding and considerate no? to the interests of other sectors while we're advancing the interests of our own sector. A pleasant afternoon, Senator, and again, thank you so much. May God bless you all in the committee and uh, the entire Philippine Senate. Exactly. Thank you, thank you. We don't, we don't have enough time, but again, uh, let me uh, 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 remind everyone that you, you are free to submit. Uh, uh, Sir Arcega, can you turn? Uh, can you use your computer, please? Okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we, we have to we have to end our uh, our um, uh, committee hearing, but uh, let me uh, again remind everyone that uh, you are free to submit your position paper. Uh, anything you'd like to uh, comment, uh, we will definitely uh, look into it uh, before we uh, we we uh, we give our committee report and defend this committee report on the floor. Uh, let me uh, just take this opportunity once again to uh, thank our distinguished colleagues who are very active today. Senator uh, Nancy Binay, who is also the chair of the Committee on uh, Science and uh, Technology. Our vice chairperson, Senator Win Gachalian, Senator Marcos, Senator Pia Cayetano, Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator Lito Lapid, Senator Bongo, and our uh, dear majority floor leader, Senator uh, Mig Subiri. At this point, I know that our uh, education and training system is already under stress, but uh, given the nature of uh, the pandemic, I believe that uh, all hands should be on deck. I think we need more consortium, more bayanihan, if I may say, more sharing of resources and information, more MBPS, more subsidies. Our experience in the Senate as we transition to online hearings has shown that uh, the shift is uh, difficult and uh, presents a lot of challenges. Paano pa kaya ang hirap ng ating mga students and uh, faculty members? The bottom line here is that uh, we all need to be more uh, creative and be more concerned with uh, the plight of the more vulnerable and high-risk uh, stakeholders. Our students, teachers, and most especially small private uh, colleges and TVIs that are tuition de dependent. That's why uh, the presence of uh, Cotesco uh, with uh, Sir Rene here in this consultation is very crucial because uh, teachers are the most uh, important factor for the success of any learning modality. In po, number one ang sina mga teachers natin. Kahit problematic ang internet connectivity, basta magaling talaga yung uh, teachers natin, may maayos na training, may adequate support, uh, may raraos pa rin po natin ito. Kaso karamihan po sa kanila nasa floating status at nakakaranas po ngayon ng uh, wage reduction. Kung ganyan po, eh, babagsak din po ang uh, motivation nila, uh, kagaya ng ating uh, narinig. So, tama po, hindi natin uh, kailangan mamili sa pagitan ng buhay at uh, edukasyon. Learning must uh, continue but uh, with careful consideration of the new realities brought about by this uh, pandemic, I think we have uh, covered a lot of uh, issues today regarding the implementation of the uh, uh, ODL, the status of uh, DICT's support to SUCs, to TVIs, the readiness of our HEIs to implement flexible learning and the financial challenges posed by the pandemic to private uh, HEIs. Before we end, let me uh, um, allow me to highlight significant points that can help us in crafting legislation and help prepare higher education institutions and the uh, tech voc sector as we uh, approach the opening of the, the academic year. First, 
we really need to strengthen the um, Open Distance Learning Act. To date, there are only 22 higher education institutions implementing open distance learning. And the number of students enrolled in open distance learning is only 0.34% in 10 SUCs surveyed for academic year 2019-2020 by PASO. As mentioned in uh, this representation's opening remarks, very few po HEIs over distance education programs after more than five years since the enactment of uh, this law. Second, according to CHED, a total of 525,000 students are enrolled in small private institutions that are likely facing difficulty in implementing flexible learning. There are more or less 1,900 colleges and universities in the country, and while there are big universities like UP, DLSU, UST, and Mapua that have the capacity to offer distance learning courses and flexible learning, there are more small and uh, medium private colleges that don't have this capacity. In this regard, we really need uh, this uh, big universities to enter into consortium or collaborate with small co colleges, most especially which are on the verge of closing down operations due to losses. Third, as uh, you already uh, aware, as you are all aware, we, we, we put in uh, the Bayanihan 2, with the help of our colleagues, additional 3 billion pesos for the development of smart campuses. However, we really need to find a way to help small and medium colleges for the uh, for their connectivity because the DICT can only provide uh, 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 support no, to, to SUCs at ta kailangan po ma-improve natin ito. Fourth, the government should provide subsidies and loan programs and not only learning vouchers to private HEIs to ensure learning continuity, most especially to the 525,000 students enrolled in small colleges. We note po yung uh, estimate ng pasok binanggit ni uh, President uh, Enriquez no? while 99% uh, of uh, uh, faculty members have access to internet at home only 31% of uh, students uh, have uh, uh, have access no? uh, Fifth, placing a moratorium on student loans will be incredibly helpful for students who are financially affected during these trying times. However, we need to ensure transparency in terms of providing students with how rebates are, uh, how rebates are uh, computed. In connection to this, HEI should also justify or explain how miscellaneous fees uh, will be used for flexible learning. The wellness and the mental health of our students should also be prioritized and uh, we have heard Senator Pia and the uh, chair and our uh, student uh, representative about this uh, particular issue. And uh, last but not the least, yung pong TWG, no, yung Technical Working Group in the uh, Philippine Qualifications Framework, yung NCC, yung council po, uh, should be formed to not just to be formed, but to be effective and uh, start working and to ensure the alignment and concurrence in the Philippines educational framework, whether traditional face-to-face -face or flexible uh, and distance uh, modalities. Uh, muli po, I'd like to uh, end on a more positive note, and this is my personal belief, when it comes to digital skills or technological proficiency, malaki po ang advantage nating mga Pilipino dyan. You know, I think everyone knows that I serve as uh, TESDA Director General for more than five years. And in those years, I was convinced that training is the key to help our people get back on their feet. Let's continue to learn on what can be done because we can't stop our movement now and we can't avoid new ways of learning but certainly, we can only approach these challenges in the best possible way. And the choice is ours. Muli, uh, sa ating mga guests, resource persons, 
Maraming salamat po, uh, especially sa inyong uh, pangunawa at inyong pasensya sa atin pong lahat na nakikinig at sumubaybay sa buong uh, pagtitipo na ito. Maraming salamat po. We are now adjourning the uh, committee, this joint uh, hearing of the Committee on Higher and Technical Education and the uh, Committee on uh, Science and Technology. Muli, maraming salamat po and may God bless us all. Maraming salamat po. This uh, hearing is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Salamat po. Maraming salamat, uh, Sir Rene. Maraming salamat. The DG Rose, thank, thank you. you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank salamat, you. Senator. Salamat uh, po, President Senator. President Ronquillo, thank you.